New York Knicks, the Orlando Magic, the Philadelphia 76ers, the San Antonio Spurs, the Chicago Bulls, the New Jersey Nets, the Houston Rockets, the Cleveland Cavaliers, select LeBron James. Canada, and welcome to the Scores 2004 NBA Draft Preview. I'm Tim McAuliffe, and I'm also more than happy to be joined by Glenn Grunwald as the chaos is about to start here. Glenn, thanks a lot for joining us. My pleasure. All right, there is much to get to over the next half hour, so let's get right to it, Glenn. Have you ever seen anything like the insanity and craziness that we've seen leading up to this draft? Boy, the heat is getting to the NBA this summer. Things are crazy. The NBA uh, has the, the best player in the league up for a trade, uh, Shaquille O'Neal, uh, Tracy McGrady, another one of the great stars of the league up, up for a trade. And so many trades already in this draft, it's, it's really uh, unprecedented. Oh, yeah, it is interesting. And if you haven't been keeping score at home, here's a little timeline of the craziness that has hit NBA fans over the last oh, week. We start with the... Pistons, of course, shocking the world by not only beating the Lakers, but dominating the former three-time champs in just five games. That was June 15th. The fallout came quick. June 19th, Zen Master has had enough. Phil makes it clear he won't be back. Then Shaq demands the trade. The big Aristotle is out. How about T-Mac? Well, reports say on June 21st, T-Mac for... Steve Francis' deal is on the way. That would see McGrady with the Rockets. Oh, but that's not all. Last night came the word that perhaps attempting to obtain more bait for a diesel deal with the Lakers. The Mavericks send Antoine Jameson to the Wizards for Jerry Stackhouse, Christian Leitner, and the fifth overall pick. Yes, it's said to be pending league approval. Also going over the last couple of days, the Blazers looking for Sebastian Telfair. They get three picks in the first round. Bobcats, insanity. They get the second overall. They send Sasha Pavlovich, Zaza Pachulia, and of course the Bulls acquire the seventh overall pick from the Sun from the Suns, and that is pending league approval. All that is 643 if you're scoring at home. So <laughs> we have to ask you the first question. That, and heading into this, is this a GM's dream or a nightmare seeing all this transpiring? Well, I think it's a bit of a nightmare because you want to be prepared. You want to know what's going to happen. You want to be prepared and think things through. But things are happening so quickly, there might be opportunities or, or, or trade offers that you have to consider on a very short notice. And, and that's tough to do. And that's a lot of pressure. On a personal level, does it at all frustrate you to see what Tracy McGrady is now doing in Orlando? Well, not really. I think. Uh, Orlando has uh, learned from the, le the tough lessons that the Raptors uh, suffered through a few years ago when Tracy left as a free agent. I think they're probably doing the right thing. They want to make sure that Tracy's committed. If he's not, then they should try and see what, uh, what they can get for him in this market. And I think they have a decent trade uh, in, in Houston, and maybe they can spin into a few other players. All right, so there is a, there's a draft going on tonight, too, as well, after all these rumors. And, and normally, that's enough to pacify the masses, but it seems to have been lost in all the trade talk. The big question, draft-wise, remains who will go first overall? Will it be Emeka Okafor, Atlanta High Schooler, or Dwight Howard? And I guess i got to put you in the position of having the number one overall pick. Do you say Okafor is first, or do you think it's, it's Dwight Howard? I say it's going to be Dwight Howard. I think uh, he's got a bigger upside than, uh, than Amika Okafor. He's very talented, very long. He's a, supposed to be a very good kid and a hard worker. If he keeps working and uh, stays dedicated to his profession, he's going to be a very good player in this league. And I think Orlando looks like they're heading in the direction of youth and, and rebuilding instead of uh, trying to, to just uh, you know, stock their roster with another good player. Yeah, and the 22-year-old Okafor, a lot of people heading in thought he would be the number one overall, but Howard a devout Christian at a, at a Southwest Atlanta Christian High, just 18 year old, but he just seems to have an enormous amount of upside. I think so. I think he, he likes to compare himself to uh, to some very good players in our league, like Kevin Garnett. If he, he even comes close to that, that's going to be a great draft pick for for the Orlando Magic. Yeah, the tail of the tapes from the draft workouts and the draft combines. The age, of course, the four years difference. Okafor spent. The three years at UConn, graduating in that time. 
course, the height with shoes and without shoes, always an important factor. The weight, Okafor 257 to 240. And as we go through some of the numbers, the standing reach is pretty close, although Howard about an inch higher. Vertical leap, again, Howard. But the big difference is the strength, and of course, that goes with being 22 and 18 years old. Okafor bench pressed 185, 22 times, while Howard did it just seven times. So we got you with Dwight Howard going first overall. Maybe we should have a look at your mock top 10. I mean, we put you on the line a couple of times here, not only with the number one overall pick, but here's Glenn's top 10 and how it looks. We have Howard and Oak 4, one and two. Now, a little surprise here, you've got Ben Gordon going at three. Well, I thought that uh, Chicago might tra trade, uh, take dang, uh, dang at that uh, position, but since they have acquired the seventh pick, I think they're gonna take Jackson and they'll, they'll look to uh, you know, get another position covered in this draft. Sean Livingston is where you have number four, and that goes to the L.A. Clippers. Luol Deng at five, Dallas, Andre Iguodala. Luke Jackson, we'll, we'll touch on him a little bit. In Toronto, we have Devin Harris, and we'll get to the Raptors in, in a little bit. We got a lot to get to. Kurt Snyder and Josh Childress out of Stanford round out your top ten. But like you said, there's a lot of different things in this draft. There's no behind you, as we see uh, Tim Duncan. There's no Tim Duncan in this draft. No, there isn't. There's no clear number one pick. And, and there's a lot of good players, though. The thing is, it's such a young draft. It's a lot of it is going to be based upon potential. And will a player reach that potential? So, you know, it's going to be uh, not only the drafting of the right player, but it's also the franchises uh, using the right ways to develop those players and taking the patience and, and effort and, and, and putting the work in with those players so that they can reach their potential. One guy that has shot up these charts in the last little while is kind of a rarity these days, and that's a four-year guy. Luke Jackson has really, really impressed over the last little while. Yeah, Luke Jackson was picked to be a mid to late first round pick out of the University of Oregon, but he has uh, really impressed people uh, in the pre-draft uh, workouts, individual workouts. Uh, I think people like the fact that he stayed four years and will be able to contribute immediately uh, in the league. Uh, he has the experience, he has the maturity, and uh, he has developed his game so that you know he is uh, probably uh, able to step in and help some teams right away. And you have him going to Chicago at the seventh pick, which would which would be interesting for that. Let's move to the other side of the spectrum, and that would be, I guess, Sean Livingston, who some folks call a pure point at a six foot seven height coming out of high school. Yeah, he's a point guard uh, because people feel he has a great uh, feel for the game, great ball handling skills, great passing skills. He will do, as the quote says, uh, make the players around him better. He's not a blazing quick player. He's a good athlete, but not uh, a speedster like a lot of people think. But he will be step into the league and be a point guard in the mo in the not that he's going to be as good as Magic Johnson, but in that 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 sort of uh, a mold. And uh, he's got a lot of people excited, and I think that. Uh, I mean, heading into the draft, and, and you, you don't have a clear number one, but a guy like that is always so intriguing because you, you're not quite sure. The upside can be huge, whereas the downside, he ends up just kind of playing a couple minutes here and there, and maybe, as you said before, at an off guard or, or, a, sh or a, a small forward position. That's right. You don't know how to react to the money, to the lifestyle of the league, to the uh, competition. There's a lot of pressure to be an NBA player, and you're not sure how he's going to react to that. But he's supposed to be a good kid, a hard worker, and uh, he's improved the aspects of his game over this past year. He's improved his outside shooting, and that'll only get better. We talk about high schoolers, but just 10 years ago at the 1994 draft, NBA general managers made 27 selections in the first round. Not one of those picks was a high schooler. Not one of those picks was an internationally trained player. In fact, of the 54 drafted, only three, Zalko Robracha, Andre Fetisov, who ended up being a great defenseman. And St. Mary's pride, Will Njoku, did play NCAA, but didn't play NCAA basketball. Yet, somehow, 10 years later, those very same GMs are now salivating over 18-year-old prospects like Demi Moore. Twenty-seven teams passed on Tony Parker. Eight teams passed on both Tracy McGrady and Dirk Nowitzki. Twelve teams let Kobe Bryant walk on by. And 56 names were called before Manu Ginobili. The lure of such potential and the pressure to find it has forced general managers across the league not only to take notice, but act out on high school and young international players, even if their report cards aren't complete. 
Last year, a record eight international players were taken in the first round, and a record tying four high schoolers received guaranteed three year contracts. I get the paper, so I don't care. And make no mistake, that's why the kids are jumping. It's obvious that last year's other first rounders, Travis Outlaw and Duty EB and Kendrick Perkins, all would have been better served by going to college. And by all accounts, of the record, eight high school seniors projected to go in the first round. None have LeBron James-type talent. Yet the idea of somehow developing a la Kobe or T-Mac is enough for many. So if the opportunity is there, the kids will always be lining up to take it. It's the same idea surrounding these so-called Euros. There is talk of as many as 10 being selected in the first round. Of those 10, only one played a major role on his international club team. 18-year-old Andres Bjerden played in Latvia, which might be okay for a hockey goalie, but it ain't exactly Duke. In just 10 years, the NBA draft has gone from what is to what could be. Potential reigns supreme, yet for every Yao and Dirk, there's a Darko and a Skeeta. For every KG and Tracy, there's a Kwame and a Sagana. It seems to be a risk general managers are willing to take in the hopes that their risk becomes part of the NBA's top billing. What more can I say? Top billing, that's what we get. Here's a look at the prep to pros for this draft. And as we go through them, Jackie Butler, one of the lesser known preps, is projected round two. The 6'10, Al Jefferson, 42 and 18, a game at Prentice, Mississippi. The intriguers, Josh Smith, J.R. Smith, and Robert Swift. Can a point guard make the jump? Well, Sebastian Telfair will give it a shot. As for the internationals, Bidrin should be the first Euro selected. Pavel Podkolzin, biggest risk and reward. And with Manya and Hirapa, both play for CSK Moscow, and both may have problems getting out of their contracts. So that makes them both intriguing prospects. And Glenn, I have to ask you about the young, the way their draft is going. It's getting younger and younger. How hard does that make it for GMs to, to be able to evaluate this talent? Well, it's much more difficult than in years past where you concentrate on major college basketball and you looked at one level of competition in the greater United States. Uh, now you're covering uh, several different continents, uh, looking at different levels of competition, uh, and trying to uh, you know, spread your scouting staff across a large, large area. It's, it's much more difficult, it takes more man hours, and takes, it's a lot more expensive on, on teams to, to do a good job. Now, if those five countries weren't enough for you, uh, projected first round international board that didn't tempt your international palate, then there are plenty more representing the global game. We'll look at some of the more exotic flavors for you. Um, yeah, how about Jung Sin Ha or Hakil O'Neal, as his agent likes to call him, looking to become the first Korean to play in the NBA. A pair of Persian big fellas, Hido and Memo, they open the doors for the Turks. Three Canadians hoping to hear their names called the 7-5. Jerry Sokolowski, an intriguing story. Ramold Augustine was a D2 All-American and Ohio State Center in Toronto native. Velomir Radinovich appears to be all on the outside looking in. Sticking with Canadian content, the Raptors slotted at eight were prospects like Ben Gordon, Devin Harris, Luke Jackson seemed to fit the bill, but Rob Babcock, that's all if he keeps that eighth selection. We have talked to teams behind us and we've talked to teams in front of us and uh, you know, we've looked at uh, a lot of different scenarios and we will continue talking. Uh, we're on the phones um, all day and all night really. This summer, the FBI's toughest agents are going deep undercover. Yo, what's up, money? You got a problem? Hold my poodle. You want some of this? I take the both of you. From the director of Scary Movie, the white chicks. Mama. I think you're flirting with me. Never! <laughs> Sean and Marlon Wayans are... Oh! White chicks. What do you think? Sexy. Speed Stick 24-7 gives you proven non-stop protection. With time-release sweat and odor fighters, Speed Stick's always there when you need it the most. Speed Stick 24-7, it never quits. Will my car be ready this afternoon like you promised? Yes. 
Do you guarantee all your work, even general maintenance? Yes. Summer can be rough on your car, so help keep it running with our summer-proof maintenance package. Get an oil change, coolant check, fluid top-up, tire rotation, and more for just $39. Trust the Midas touch. Quiznos' world-famous classic Italian sub is now even more impossible to resist. The toasted classic Italian is only $2.99. That's almost a toonie off our regular price. Freshly sliced capigola, pepperoni, honey-cured ham, Genoa salami, and melted mozzarella oven toasted the way only Quiznos can. It's the best classic Italian sandwich outside of Italy. Quiznos Classic Italian. Perfection. Only at Quiznos and only $2.99. Quiznos. Toasted tastes better. The score has the triple crown, and you have the chance to win some great prizes. Just log on to thescore.ca and enter your top three horses for each of the Canadian Triple Crown races, and you could win a Mustek portable DVD player. Mustek, the makers of incredible electronics available at office depots across Canada. Or you could win this Bushnell ImageView digital binocular, courtesy of Gentech International. Watch the triple crown on the score and log on to thescore.ca to win. With the fourth pick in the 2003 NBA Draft, the Toronto Raptors select Chris Bosch from Georgia Tech University. It was seven years ago in the fourth spot that a Georgia Tech player was drafted. Stephon Marbury by Milwaukee. Here Chris Bosch is taken by the Toronto Raptors. Last year, the man sitting beside me had some success with that fourth overall selection, but this year, Raptors GM Rob Babcock has been introduced to the game through a baptism by fire. Hired on June 7th, Babcock has had to prepare for an expansion draft, get ready for the entry draft, and hire a head coach all within three weeks of being hired. The first step, well, that's done. I sat down with him on Tuesday to talk about step number two. You have said that the current Raptors squad needs help at both point guard and at center. Is your ideology one that says, hey, we've got a draft for our needs, or one that says, we've got to draft the best player available? Well, I, ideally, you do both. I mean, you're getting the best player and it fills a need at the same time. Um, when it comes to the point where you have a pick and you have, say, one guy who definitely fills a need, but you don't rank, rank him near as high as the guy who's the best player, you know, with uh, a guy with talent, you're acquiring talent, then you figure out how to balance that out later. Uh, you, you don't want to turn down a guy who has a chance to be a star just to get a position. How comfortable are you drafting at the number eight overall spot, and is there a chance that that could change? Well, uh, we're getting there. We're, we have talked to teams behind us, and we've talked to teams in front of us, and uh, you know, we've looked at uh, a lot of different scenarios, and we will continue talking. Uh, we're on the phones um, all day and all night, really. There's a lot of work that goes into uh, a trade, and then it might not happen. So. We're, we're looking, and you never can tell. I mean, something could happen, may happen uh, during the draft, and you may not know it. Yeah. You know I have to ask this, but over the last uh, week or so, the trade winds in the NBA have been more like hurricanes. Have you and the Raptors been involved in any of these talks involving superstars changing hands? Uh, well, we are, we are involved with, uh, with trade discussions with teams on a regular basis, but uh, as far as... You know, I don't get into to talking about specific things that are going on or, you know, with what team or, you know, speculating or anything like that. But, you know, all I can say is that we, we talk trades with teams on a regular basis, especially in that, you know, couple of weeks before the draft. So Has anyone asked about Vince? And if so, how seriously do you take it? Oh, well, you know, we certainly, Vince is the best player on our team, and he's, uh, he's an all-star, and he's a highlight film, and he's a great talent. So yeah, naturally we, we get some, some uh, inquiries about Vince, and, but that said, you know, you're looking to improve your team in any way, and if someone makes an offer that you think significantly improves your team, well, you're going to listen to that. At the end of these two very important weeks, what is the best case scenario for both Rob Babcock and the Toronto Raptors? Well, if everything works out, great, okay? exactly as you would uh, love to see, and that means that seven teams in front of us have to cooperate. <laughs> Okay, uh, that we that we would land a, a player, and I'm I'm really not all concerned about that position. But it, it'd be nice if we if we got the player that could play a point or the center. But pl have a player who's got a, a great NBA future down the road and has the type of character that we want on our basketball team, um, and that would be accomplished. And we get a player at 39 
who's got a chance to develop uh, in the future. Maybe he um, doesn't make our team right away, but maybe he plays in Europe for a while and then, then comes back. And that we get a coach, and we get a coach that uh, is somebody that the, the fans will embrace, uh, the players will embrace, that we'll embrace, and, and has the same philosophy as I do, and we, we get a whole staff in place, and we're, we're getting to work. Well, I guess that would make you the busiest man in basketball. <laughs> Everybody's busy right now. Uh, those that have a coaching opening, there's a few are, are a little bit busier, but you know, I mean, we, we all are in this, in this business because we love it, and it's, uh, it's long hours right now, and it's very busy, but um, there isn't a moment of it that I, that I don't love. It's, it's fun. Perhaps Babcock should deal that number eight. The history of the eighth overall selection littered with questionable picks or busts, as some people like to call them. You look through it, Sagana Jop, Sean Respert, Todd Day, Bo Kimball, all the way down to Lancaster Gordon in 1984. I think he lasted two years in the league. Best picks at eight, Robert Parrish, Jack Sigma in 76 and 77. We put Andre Miller and TJ Ford in there. Since 84, the best points per game average of no any number eight pick is Vin Baker at 15.6. While number nine's nice, McGrady, Nowitzki, Marion, Amari Stoudemire, very interesting. So the eight pick hasn't been the best in the past. Let's talk to you about what you think the Raptors should do at this spot. Do they hold on to it and, and address a, a certain spot, or do you do you draft for potential? Like uh, the same question, I guess I asked Babcock: is is it something where you look for both, or or what do you think they should do? Well, I think the Raptors have identified two clear needs: a point guard and, and a center. And I think it's probably easier to get a point guard than it is a center. So. Uh, uh, unfortunately, uh, the, the best center that's going to be available is, is probably uh, Arroyo at, at that position, and, and I think he's going to be a good pro, uh, but there may be some other, better players uh, ultimately uh, uh, in this draft at the eight position. But again, I think they can probably fill those needs elsewhere. Yeah, the big fella right in the middle. So Araujo is how I've been told, told to pronounce it. My producer says, don't say Arroyo, say Araujo. Okay. That's, the, that's the Brazilian way. So I'm trying my best to keep it going. All right, we're going to take a break, come back with plenty more, including some talk about Ivan Chiriev, who has since dropped out of the NBA draft. Back with more after these. Speed Stick 24-7 gives you proven nonstop protection. With time-release sweat and odor fighters, Speed Stick's always there when you need it the most. Speed Stick 24-7. It never quits. This summer... I want to be where the action is. Okay, Blackie Chan. They may be deep undercover. You sure this is going to work? Just trust me. But there's some things they can't hide. Oh! From the director of Scary Movie... You want to hurt yourself, sweetheart? Don't worry. I won't. I'm going to wear it. Sean and Marlon Wayans are... Mama. White chicks. Is that what you think? He's a man! Some Jerry Springer. A film by Keenan Ivory Wings. NBA wants and needs Ivan Chiria. The name is Ivan Chiriev. The story is among the most intriguing I've ever seen. He burst upon the scene as quickly as he disappeared from it. If you don't know about Chiriev, he arrived in Canada from Russia about a year and a half ago as an 18-year-old with plenty of basketball promise, a legit seven-footer with some skills. NBA scouts bigged him up to the point where many considered him a first-round pick, that is, until the Adidas All-Canadian game. Joining us now to discuss the enigma known as Ivan Chiriev is the Global Mail's Michael Grange, who has followed Chiriev's steps for the last year. Michael, thanks a lot for joining us. Thank you, Tim. I guess we got to start with the fact that this story is not only bizarre, but it's just, it's gone so far. He's gone from a legit first round pick, and now we don't know where he is. Yeah, it's, it's absolutely full circle. Uh, he came over from, from uh, really grew up in St. Petersburg, Russia, came over to, to stay with an uncle in Oakville. And, uh, you know, initially the thought was maybe uh, get an education and, and parlay his basketball skills into an NBA, or sorry, a, a college scholarship. Uh, and then, you know, the NBA dream started taking hold and he was kind of at a crossroads of a couple of trends. That is sort of the, the high school trend, the guys coming, skipping college, going right to the NBA. Uh, sort of the big international players with uh, sort of perimeter skills. He kind of 
fit that bill and, and also sort of the, the unknown international, which we've seen and, and guys have kind of rocketed up the draft boards and been picked and, and uh, you know, he wondered for a little while if he was going to be that person in this year's draft. Yeah, and going to a St. Thomas Aquinas in Oakville well, hasn't produced many NBA stars, in fact. I don't think it has any. Where did it all go wrong for, for Yvonne Chiriot? Well, I think it was just a case of, of uh, expectations outstripping uh, reality. And, 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 and part of those expectations were uh, Yvonne's expectations of himself and the people around him, people like Chris Van Zeele, who's a well-known guy in the Toronto basketball community, who in turn uh, worked closely with Yvonne. Uh, you know, the, and, and you can understand where the expectations come from. The guy is seven feet. He legitimately is a, is a really solid shooter. He's got legitimate ball handling skills. Uh, so on that level, you know, you put, the, put that package out there and it says NBA. But really, the reality of the matter is, is he didn't have a lot of really hard playing experience. He played this year or last year in a, in a high school league that was, was far from the best. Uh, so he really didn't develop his, his game readiness in that respect. And uh, really, at the end of the day, proved to be a kind of a, a talented but, but young and unproven player who really didn't, wasn't ready yet for the NBA, and, and time will tell if he ever will be. And I guess we saw most of that in the Adidas All-Canadian game, and you saw that clip where he got booed. What's next for Yvonne Chiriev? He kind of just disappeared off the charts once that all, uh, Adidas All-Canadian game was played and no longer people had him in a first round, even a second round. He just kind of dropped down. So have you heard the, the latest step for him and what he's trying to do? Because he already hired an agent that expels NCAA from the map. Absolutely. I mean, that was a big decision on his part. He went with uh, Bill Duffy, and, and I think that was another aspect. You talk about where this all came from. Bill Duffy, one of the most respected agents of the game, uh, took him on, and, and uh, that would suggest that there was uh, some real potential here. Uh, the good news in this story, I think, is, is Duffy's a guy who's known to work pretty well with his clients and, and uh, has a sincere interest in Yvonne. And uh, basically, after that All-Canadian all game, you know, there was kind of a, a summit meeting, I guess, between all the interested parties and, and decided to pull his name out of the draft in the time being, realizing that if he was going to get picked, it would be sort of deep in the second round. That might not help him. Uh, and really, the strategy now is to find him a place to play in Europe. Germany is looking like a strong possibility, not even necessarily top division, maybe even second division, a place where, most importantly, he can uh, get a lot of playing time, be a key part of a good team, and practice and get exposed to professional basketball, not even necessarily at the top level, but at a level that is comfortable with his skills now. Uh, right now, the, the hope, I think, is if Yvonne can, can go over there and, and perform well, stay healthy, uh, develop his body and his skills, uh, you might hear his name in the 05 draft. If not, maybe they'll have to wait till 06. Yeah, it just leaves you shaking your head. All right, thanks a lot for coming in, Michael. Thank you. There is Michael Grange of the Globe and Mail. Let's kind of wrap up this preview show right now. We thought that, that Orlando might hold the cards, but in reality, Chicago right now is holding a lot of cards with the three and the seven pick, and they have youngsters on their team. They tried that high school route. Do you think that they're going to they're gonna deviate from the three and the seven? Well, that's a good question. You know, we know Okafor and Howard are going to be one, two, in, in whatever order. What does Chicago do? Do they keep the seventh pick, or do they trade it to Indiana for... Uh, uh, Al Harrington and uh, getting rid of Eddie Robinson's contract. Uh, that's a definite possibility. And I think they lean towards Ben Gordon, who's an experienced college player, has been very successful at the college le level with an NCAA championship. And I think that's the way they might go. I think they'll get two experienced players uh, as opposed to two young, uh, you know, untried players. Last question, and we have to ask this because I know the folks at home are thinking is, will any of these trades come to fruition tonight? And by that I mean Shaq or Tracy McGrady? I think T-Mac definitely gets traded. I think the, the Magic have made the decision they're going to move forward without T-Mac, and I think they've got some things in the work that make sense for them. It's hard for me to believe that Shaq's going to get traded, but I think it's a possibility. You know, I think uh, the Lakers have said, look, we haven't won the championship in two years, and uh, you're making a lot of money. We're going to move forward with a younger Kobe Bryant and see what we can do with another group of players. All right, there it is. We've got to wrap things up for our preview show. The boys and girls from ESPN will take it from here, but we will stay here for the Canadian perspective. It is the 2004 NBA draft from the Mecca of basketball, and it starts after this. <laughs> Thank you.
Caesar. Not recommended for everyone. This is Madison Square Garden, where for generations, basketball greats have come to shine. And a new class is heading off to the NBA. Omeka Okafor and Ben Gordon have won national titles. They starred in the garden before. Devin Harris is ready for his shot on Broadway as well. A freshman from ACC country joining some high school stars who are ready to make the big jump to the NBA. Some of the big names you'll get to know and find out where they will call home. It's time for the NBA Draft 2004. Meet the NBA's future. West with talent. Blocked by Okafor. Determined to cast their dream. Gordon straight down the middle. Oh, dang. Tonight, their destiny unfolds. We're the next in the race. Final for MVP. Okafor blocks the shot. Student of the game. National player of the year. And proud father. I'm a man. Loaded with potential. The Pac-10, the Big Ten player of the year. Choir leader. We are the future, the next great hope. I realized my NBA dream while watching Hakeem the dream when I was five years old, while leading the Hawks to an undefeated season. When I sent the garden to a friend. Gordon driving, I realized my NBA dream with hours of sweat and hard work. Now my dream, my dream. Now my dream, you can't stop me tonight. You know, a dream that will be my opponents with your night. I am a smooth, strong, explosive, hungry, clutch, multi-talented, fast, make, shot block, dog. We are the NBA future. We are who you need. And so it begins for the class of 2004. Somewhere in there, there's all-stars who very well might win an NBA championship. There are dreams that will not be fulfilled in five or ten years somewhere. Who knows where Emeka Okafor's success will be found. Will he continue the great run that had Connecticut as the national champion just a couple of months ago? Dwight Howard waits. Big leap from high school to the NBA. Hard to find a young man better prepared to make it. With his son known as Mir Mir, Jameer Nelson, who led St. Joseph's on a dream run that captured the hearts of Philadelphia. Just some of the individual stories as they settle in here at the theater at Madison Square Garden in an off-season promising seismic movement to the NBA. One very significant part is always the NBA draft. Glad to have you along here on ESPN. The draft will start at the bottom of the hour. We're going to get you ready for the next half hour. Joined by Jay Billis, Stephen A. Smith, Tom Tolbert up here on the main set, Mike Tirico. We've got a, just a, as usual, a crew of ESPN analysts, reporters around the country, 18 video conference sites. So if it happens on draft night, we'll get you dialed in. And the big story, guys, is we don't know who the number one pick is going to be. Most years you have a clue, you have a feel, and certainly it's going to be one of two choices for Orlando. However, there is a lot to be talked about regarding their selection and Jay and the guys will weigh in on that momentarily. As you've become familiar over the last two decades watching drafts on ESPN, we'll keep you entertained, we'll show you everything that happens, and you can follow along with your favorite team. Down the side, just follow the sliding list. When your team is highlighted, there will be information. Information about players. Jay Billis has watched hours of tapes scouted in person, a lot of these players. Jay's best available list. There are polls, trivia questions, history, so we will keep you entertained. And always on the bottom, a constant update of what's going on in the draft. What's going on right now? Let's check the headlines on draft night 2004. Who is number one, Emeka Okafor or Dwight Howard? We'll talk some news about that and then the issues behind Orlando's selection coming up in about a half hour. Among the other headlines on the list around the NBA, 
Tracy McGrady and Shaquille O'Neal, two of the five best players in the league, are in serious trade discussions. We'll find out who is making moves and making conversation. And trading spaces is not about uh, switching homes and building a new family room for your neighbor. It's about moving around the NBA draft. It's spot five and spot seven, spot 22. We'll detail all that momentarily. First, the number one selection. Orlando's decision-making process obviously involves the talent of Emeka Okafor, Dwight Howard. Also, the health question with Emeka Okafor that was raised a lot in April and quieted down for the last couple of months. Yeah, Mike, I, I think it's really the only issue, at least from my judgment, as to whether you take Emeka Okafor or Dwight Howard. I had one NBA representative tell me that the doctors for his team flagged Emeka Okafor's back. That means it's a significant issue for those particular doctors. That does not mean it's an issue for Orlando, but it's something that Orlando is going to have to clear and feel comfortable with if they're going to take a Mecca Okafor. Otherwise, it is perfectly reasonable to take Dwight Howard with the number one pick because he is healthy. You don't have any concerns about his back at all. We'll talk to a Mecca Okafor momentarily. I mentioned all of our colleagues who'll be joining us on our coverage. You cannot talk college basketball on this network without one man. Dick Vitale, who will join us throughout the night from down in Florida. Dick, I know you got a chance up close very often to see Connecticut's title run and the Mecca Okafor. Where does he fit into this draft in your mind? Well, I tell you right now, it'd be a no-brainer for me. I got to go for Okafor. He did it late in that game against Duke when he had 18 points in the last 15 minutes. He was absolutely brilliant when the pressure was on. He played in the big stage. He's a kid that could dominate. The last college player to be number one was a defensive force as well. When we talk about certainly Kenyon Martin, bottom line is I think this kid could be a defensive force. I think his offensive efficiency will get better and better. I look at a 10-year player, love his mental maturity and we don't know about high school players man the jury's still out on guys like Tyson Chandler Kwame Brown I know one thing Mr. Okafor to me is going to be the sure sure thing Dick hasn't been on the air in 10 weeks can you tell he is ready and he will be here throughout the night Dick great to have you along let's find out about Emeka Okafor's back and Emeka's mental state as he waits he could be a half hour from being part of history number one over pick overall pick he's standing by with Stuart Scott Stu Thanks a lot, Mike. Emeka, there were concerns about your back back in the NCAA tournament, back in the Big East tournament. There are some people who are saying now that the back might be a concern. You told Mark Jones yesterday it's not a concern. What's your reaction right now to people still talking about this? Um, I'm still taken back. Uh, you know, I've been a lot of numerous doctors with back to what I've been saying, and, and I don't know what else to do. You know, I've, got, I've exhausted all possibilities and, and I'm trying to demonstrate that my back's all right, but all I can do is go with the floor right now. Feels fine. Feels fine. Feels perfect. Perfect. You're either going number one or number two. No one knows that. Some people might say, hey, what's the big deal? How important is it to you to go number one? Uh, it just, it just be a nice, you know, nice finish. Uh, you know, my mind, you know, I came in, I came into college as an unknown high school player and, you know, to finish off, you know, a possible number one pick, you know, just a nice, just a nice smile on my face. Somebody said once you have obsessive discipline. Is that how you led the nation in block shots and rebounds and got a GPA that's higher than all of mine combined in four years? This is part of it. I just, I just found a habit, found my niche, and just stuck with it. All right, man, we appreciate it. Good luck tonight, it. Mike. Thanks. This is a guy who used to get up at 1 o'clock in the morning to study two or three or four more hours. <laughs> Well, the 3-8 GPA shows some of that, Stu, and what a great citizen as well. You know, with the, all the anecdotes about Mecca Okafor, the one I love is George Blaney, very respected head coach for a long time in college basketball, assistant for Jim Calhoun, watching the unofficial workouts with the players. He left a post-it note for Jim Calhoun, the head coach of Connecticut. First time he saw Okafor, it had three words on it. Oh, my God. <laughs> and Mecca Okafor has delivered for UConn and now will deliver in the NBA. Should he deliver for Orlando at number one, Steve? I don't think there's any question about it, unless you can show me that this kid has back problems. There's no excuse whatsoever why Mecca Okafor shouldn't be the number one pick in the NBA draft. You look at the Orlando Magic. They gave up 101.1 points per game. They gave up 46% shooting from the field to the opposition. You look at a Mecca Okafor. This man plays some defense. He comes to play. He's a national champion. He's got all the requisite credentials imaginable. The stuff that Dwight Howard, as great as he may be, hopes to have a Mecca Okafor has already accomplished. And if you're the Orlando Magic, you don't need to be playing guessing games. You need a surefire pick, and there's no question the Mecca is it. You know, I'm not sure who you take. All I know is in the NBA, this is the most important draft 
in team sports. In baseball, you can get a Hall of Famer like Mike Piazza in the second, in the 62nd round. Extreme, yes, but you can get good players in the 10th round, 20th round. In football, you can get a Super Bowl MVP, Tom Brady, in the sixth round. And while we talk about Ben Wallace and he was undrafted and what he meant to Detroit Pistons this year, they had a second overall pick in Rasheed Wallace, a third overall pick in Chauncey Billups, and a seventh overall pick in Rip Hamilton. If you mess up the first round in the NBA, you not only hurt yourself next year, you can hurt yourself for four or five years. 442 players in the NBA, 61% taken in round one. Mm -hmm. So if you don't get it here, you get yep. a guy who would likely be on your roster for a while. Let's bring in David Aldridge because standing behind Orlando is Charlotte, the Bobcats, 30th NBA franchise. Their first season starts in about five months. And David, uh, if Emeka Okafor is still around, I would imagine they would be quite happy to see him at number two. They'd be delighted, Mike. I can tell you, they, they checked out Emeka Okafor's back on three separate occasions, including bringing in a specialist to look at it. Everything checked out fine. If for some reason Emeka Okafor is still on the board at two, they will do a victory dance down in Charlotte and very happily take him with the second pick. They feel like this is a great guy to build a franchise around. They'll be very happy to take Dwight Howard, but they'd be more happy to take Emeka Okafor. All right, David, hang loose here because item two on our headlines was trading spaces. There are some potential trades out there that have been talked about for the last couple of days on our draft preview shows in Sports Center. They are are not official trades yet. I'll explain why in a second. One proposed trade would have Dallas picking in the five slot where Washington was. The exchange of ACC past players who are now NBA veterans. Stackhouse Leitner to Dallas. Antoine Jamison to Washington. The other move would involve the Phoenix Sun spot, number seven. That would go to Chicago, which also has the number three pick. Phoenix would get a second round pick this year, 31. Cash and a future first round pick. The reason both of these trades are proposed trades and not actual done deal yet. Very simply, in the NBA, you have to have a first-round draft pick either this year or next year. Because of trades that have already been made, the teams in question, Phoenix and Washington, may not have their first-round selection for the 2005 draft. Thus, they cannot trade their 2004 first-round pick. So they'll go up, pick the player, and then a trade can be done with the team. It's uh, somewhat uh, legalese, somewhat hard to understand, but that's why they are proposed trades, not done deals now. David. Dallas intrigues me because if they're up there at five, uh, is this all part of their big picture trying to acquire assets and make a move or a run at Shaquille O'Neal? Absolutely, Mike. You know, at five, they've been trying all day to move back. They called Cleveland at 10. They called Utah at 14, called Boston at 15. The reason is a 7-5 center from Russia named Pavel Petkolzin. This is a guy that they would like to take and perhaps put in the package with other players for Shaquille O'Neal. The problem is they're not sure they want to take him at five. So they're trying to get other assets assets. The problem is they want teams to take on bad contracts. They called Utah and asked to, to take Tariq Abdul ahead, who has a huge contract. This is something most teams aren't going to do. They called Cleveland. They wanted to try and get Zadrunas Ilgaskis and then redirect him to L.A. in an offer for Shaquille O'Neal. So Dallas at five, I think, is the action team in the first round. Until we know exactly what they do with that pick, that's the rest of the first round is going to be in flux. So although the names are not as big as last year's draft, we have intrigue at one, at two, the Clippers at four, and here at the five spot, Chicago at three and seven as well. I want to go back to the other veteran big name on the trading block, Tracy McGrady. Any updates there? Well, there's a couple of uh, updates. First of all, Steve Francis is going to meet with Rich DeVos, the Magic's owner, this weekend. He's going to sit down with him. he get a feel for Rich DeVos. He's done some homework. He likes Rich DeVos very much. Steve will also talk to a couple of friends of his, very close friends of his, Nick Van Exel and, and Sam Cassell, guys who've been traded before, guys with whom he has a business relationship and a personal relationship. He feels much more comfortable about Orlando, but he wants to see for himself. I can tell you this, Mike, if he goes down to Orlando and he doesn't like what he sees and he tells the Magic that, the Orlando Magic are going to go to Phoenix and see if they can trade Tracy McGrady to Phoenix. That's not, a, that's not a, you know, we don't know if that's going to happen because Steve is comfortable right now with the Magic. But if he says he's not for whatever reason, they're going to go back to Phoenix and see if they can restart talks with the Suns. Poor John Weisbrod has taken over as the general manager in Orlando. This is his first draft, and John has Tracy McGrady trading one of the five or six best players in the NBA and a decision with the number one pick on his plate trying to sort all that out. It's been a busy couple of days for John. His phone has been ringing for sure over the last couple of days. I don't feel 
sorry for him. Let me repeat myself. I do not feel sorry for John Weisbrod. You just became the general manager for the Orlando Magic a few months ago, and my goodness, you have the number one overall pick in the draft and a superstar that everybody wants to trade a marquee talent in order to get. That is not a bad position for the Orlando Magic to be in, including Mr. John Weisbrod. As a matter of fact, he should feel lucky. I think once you make over six figures, you know, forget about Phil feeling sorry for him. You'd be happy with yourself, right? You're Orlando, you get to play golf, you got the Disney World down there. I mean, it's cool. Not that bad, is it? No, it's not that bad, but he's got a hard choice to make here. It's, it's not that hard. It's, it's not that hard. Take Okafor. <laughs> We'll see if they take him back over for when the draft gets started here at the bottom of the hour. There are so many other players, and just remember, as we talk about teams, assets, pawns, people, this is a great individual human story tonight because some of these young men are living a lifelong dream. They will be first-round picks in the NBA draft. Let's visit with a couple of them, including a guy who made great strides and headlines in college basketball this year. He's interviewed by our colleague, Mark Jones. Mark? Yeah, Jameer Nelson, the college basketball player of the year, and I'm told by some family members here, uh, the father of the year, Jameer Jr., right behind us, has a birthday coming up, going to turn three soon. Hey, this has been a nice ride for you. A year ago at this time, you decided to go back to school. Here you are a year later. How have you increased your chances of becoming a lottery pick? Well, hopefully I increased them a lot, but, uh, you know, I'm very fortunate to be in this situation, so, uh, you know, I can't say more. Just leave it up to God, man. On paper, anyway, there are some other point guards rated ahead of you. How has that served as motivation for you? Well, I, I mean, those guys deserve to be uh, ranked ahead of me. We all, you know, bring different things to the table. So really, to me, it's not who's ranked ahead or who's ranked behind. It's whatever team needs. Good luck in trying to get your son to go to bed tonight, huh? <laughs> yeah, it's not going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Let's go to Stewart with Devin Harris. Mark, from a guy who decided to go back to school one more year to a guy who decides to forego his senior year, Devin Harris. Devin, with you next year, Wisconsin will be a top five team in the nation. You might be national player of the year. I know you agonized about the decision. Why did you decide to go pro early? Um, it was just, you know, once my coach, we felt it was it was necessary for me to go. This, this kind of opportunity you can't pass up. And, I mean, it was tough to leave a, a school like that, Wisconsin. I love those guys to death, but this is kind of the best decision for me. Some people have called you quicker than TJ Ford. That's like uh, uh, lightning quick. How do you know you're strong enough to play in the NBA? Um, well, like I said, you don't have to be as strong. You got to be quick to avoid the hits. And, you know, TJ has proved, done a great job with it, and hopefully I can do the same. I mean, if you can get around guys, they can't hit you. All right. From one point guard, we go back to Jonesy to another point guard. Yeah, Ben Gordon from UConn. Got about 35 friends and family members here from nearby Mount Vernon. You can almost hear them all right now. Ben, uh, your workouts were lights out by all accounts. How did you allay any fears that GMs may have had about you being a shooting guard in a point guard's body? You no, know, I just went in there and just tried to, you know, play my game. You know, obviously they get to watch you a lot closer, you know, so I was able to, you know, display some, some other things that I could do that, you know, they may have not seen during the year. What's it been like going through this whole process with your teammate, Emeka Okafor? Not many guys get a chance to do that, especially both of you looking like first-round guys. It's been a good experience. You know, he's been calling me, you know, asking me about um, some of the workouts and things like that. But I kind of joke him, like, you only got to work out for one team, one or two teams, so why are you asking me about any workouts for? But it's good, you know, to have somebody in the same position as you. All right, thanks a lot for joining us, and good luck. Hey, his nickname is Gentle Ben, Mike, but his game speaks volumes loudly. Back to you. I remember his freshman year, I tried to give him the nickname Madison Square Gordon because he had an unbelievable Big East tournament. He always played well on this stage, just a train ride away from where he grew up in Mount Vernon, New York. Still a lot to do as we move closer to the first pick in the 2004 NBA draft. Okafor or Howard, that drama awaits. These two guys just try to look cool and kill time to find out where their next home is going to be. All these players. They're good, but they're still a work in progress. Not even, man. The NBA draft one. ESPN, baby! Come on, what are your lines, man? Yes. Suddenly, in the rearview mirror, he saw the face! Remember your first s'mores?
Introducing new Hershey S'mores. Hershey milk chocolate on soft, chewy marshmallow and crunchy graham cracker bits. Hershey S'mores, a new way to enjoy a classic. Speed Stick 24-7 gives you proven non-stop protection. With time-release sweat and odor fighters, Speed Stick's always there when you need it the most. Speed Stick 24-7, it never quits. Polite society tells us that it's rude to stare. But then along came the 2005 Nissan Altima. With a new redesigned interior, a state-of-the-art navigation system, and a sleek, new, refined exterior. So go ahead, stare. Frankly, it'd be rude not to. This program on the score brought to you by the 2005 Nissan Altima. From a player whose uh, favorite movie is fine night for you and your family, uh, Dwight, tell us exactly, a lot has been made about the relationship between you I think we have a, a growing relationship, you know, he's a great guy, it's my first time meeting him, you know, and he's been very nice to me, you know what I'm saying, and it's, I'm just happy to be around him. Part of the plan with you going to whichever NBA team selects you includes your cousin living with you. What was the idea behind that, and whose decision was that? Well, that was uh, my parents' decision, you know, and he's there for per um, for support off the court, you know, emotionally, and just just to be there with me. You got a new graduation present not that long ago, a brand new uh, BMW. Tell us about it. It was nice. <laughs> <laughs> it's very fast, you know. I went from a. 84 Crown Vic that doesn't do nothing but go up to 84 miles an hour to a, to a car that goes up to 160, so it's real good. All right, thanks a lot for joining us. Hey, BMW Mike stands for Big Man's Wagon right now. Back to you. Yeah, he's got to fit in to jump from high school onto the NBA stage. How will Dwight Howard do from a basketball skill standpoint? Well, from a skill standpoint, he reminds you very much of a Kevin Garnett with his skills because he can step away from the basket. He's a graceful athlete with great court awareness and a great feel. The fact that he can step away and put the ball on the floor, he's a pretty decent shooter with a very nice touch, and he is very ball friendly. This young man has terrific footwork that you don't often find in a guy his size. When you take a look at his skill set and exactly what he can do, he has high numbers in just about everything. He has a very nice touch. He's a good passer defensively. He can block shots with either hand, which is very unusual, and he's an outstanding athlete. The only question when you make the comparison with Kevin Garnett is, does he have the same drive and determination as a Kevin Garnett? Garnett. Does he want to be great? Because at times he can be a little bit soft, but he is an 18-year-old kid. Yeah, and Dick Vitale would bring you back in from Florida. That's one of the things with all the high school players, a lot of great talent and a lot of unknowns with them as well. You know, Mike, we talk about Dwight Howard, certainly, as Jay said, great athletic ability, but we never know. I heard all those great reviews about Kwame Brown, Tyson Chandler. There's always that question mark. That's why this draft is potential, potential, potential. That's why I loved it two decades ago when David Stern stood there 20 years ago, and the names were Olajuwon, Bowie, and guys like Jordan, and people like Barkley, and Stockton. There was never any doubt that they would be factors in the M. NBA. Now we got a developmental draft. Yes, you look at Howard, you say potential, you hope and pray. It becomes a draft of hoping and praying, man. You go to bed at night and you pray. Please let him be a star. And Dick, the draft of 74, 10 years before that, 12 All-Stars, including George Gervin, Bill Walton, Maurice Lucas, among others. Well, how about last year? I mean, last, well, last year was an impact draft. You know, so it's not all developmental. It's developmental this year, but last year was an impact draft. Oh, 
I know is when I when I first got drafted, I bought a car that went 180 miles an hour too, and it was cool. But $400 tickets bite. I just say that right now. So so be careful. Well, well, what comes to my mind when I hear about the White House, I think Charlotte is a perfect situation for him. I personally hope he does land at number two because remember, this is an expansion franchise. Nobody's expecting anything from them. You're happy you got a basketball team. You're not going to win for the first three years or so, and that gives the White Howard the time he needs to develop into that superstar that everybody believes he's going to be. He has a tremendous upside. We all know that, but you can afford to be developmental when you're in an expansion franchise. Going to the Orlando Magic, you don't have time for that. Orlando and Charlotte will be in the same division, the reconstituted NBA in the Southeast Division. So Okafor and Howard, no matter where they end up, will get to know each other. Who will end up where? We'll start finding out in a few minutes. This program on the score brought to you by Mott's Clamato Caesars. Not recommended for everyone. <laughs> Caesar. Not recommended for everyone. The story continues Wednesday. How do you protect your car from damaging UV rays? Try Armor. Armor all protectant. It does more than clean and shine. It protects. Now more than ever with our best UV formula. The full thing you need one hundred thousand dollar Rockstar Road Trip. Find a platinum bottle and you can have four hundred hours to blow a hundred grand from coast to coast. And you can't have anything to show for it. What are you going to do? Must be nice to do it. Just necessary. Which guys can come in and be a, f a factor early on? Not very many. I mean, you're going to have to wait on all of them just about because it's going to take some time for them to develop, whether it's Al Jefferson or Sean Livingston. If you've got the number four pick and you're the Clippers and you need a point guard, I think you take Devin Harris because he can come in and play right away. Sean Livingston may wind up being the best player in this entire draft five years down the road, but you're going to have to wait a while. I think Howard will be an impact player because of the situation he'll land in in Charlotte. They'll have no choice but to rely on him. And I think Al Jefferson, I'm sorry, I mean, you know, that could happen. These guys are rugged. Anytime you got that kind of skills, people are going to look at you. You don't want to say anything? No, not really. <laughs> you will see a record number of high school players are entire first half of the first round, maybe 15 to 30. <laughs> you could be high schoolers or international players. A little hot under the collar, Mecca. We'll find out where you and Dwight are going coming up next.
Who am I? It is the Emeka Okafor Show. I am you. Alley oop and I am you. Suddenly, everybody has a laptop. What gives? It's a hotspot. A hotspot? A hotspot. Broadband. Wireless. A tipping point. One hotspot, a blip. Ten, a novelty. Then the game of business changes. Billions of dollars fly through the air. Billions? Billions. Watch your head. How's our security? If it weren't for men like Sean, the art of building rock walls would long be gone. But too much sun and wind dries out his skin. Good thing he washes up with Irish Spring. It's a moisturizing soap that leaves your skin feeling fresh and healthy. And it delivers pro-vitamin E. Now Sean has the smoothest skin in town, with lasses gathered all around. Irish Spring Vitamin Soap. It's good for your skin. in the WNBA's Liberty. To our fans watching on ESPN and in over 200 countries around the globe and logging on to NBA.com, thank you for joining us and thank you for supporting us in this record-breaking season. And of course, to the NBA faithful convened here tonight, thank you for joining us. The first pick in the 2004 NBA draft will be made by the Orlando Magic, who have five minutes to make their selection. Five minutes between each selection in the first round. And just for perspective, a couple years ago, the Orlando Magic were up 3-1 on the Detroit Pistons, knocking on the door of the second round of the playoffs. Lost that game, fell back 21 games to 21-61 and 61 since then. Got the number one pick in this year's draft. They've had number ones before, winning the lottery in 92 to get Shaquille O'Neal. Then in 1993, the next year, Pat Williams, the lucky charm himself, there as they got the number one pick. Chris Webber was drafted. A trade eventually made Penny Hardaway the man who was the body to go with that number one pick in Orlando. But as we detailed earlier, John Weisbrot is in replacing John Gabriel as the general manager. There's a lot on their plate, including their big star, Tracy McGrady, asking for a trade. Uh, really, Orlando hearing what he said about staying 
and Tracy's kind of telling them, I want out if we're going to rebuild. But, Stephen, they do need to rebuild now. There's no question about it. They were awful last year. They won 21 games. All they had was Tracy McGrady. They definitely need a change. That's why they're talking to Houston. That's why they're talking to Phoenix. That's why they're going to be talking to anybody that's willing to make a, a formidable offer for Tracy McGrady's services. You don't need just one play anymore. You've got to start thinking about rebuilding everything. And if you can get multiple star quality players for Tracy McGrady, you've got to go ahead and do that if you're the Orlando Magic because obviously their history has shown you can't just rely on one superstar because they might leave you. Another thing history has shown is that over the past 15, 20 years, to win a championship, you need guys who can defend the bucket. Aside from the Chicago Bulls, who are great with perimeter defenders with Scottie Pippen, Michael Jordan, Ron Harper, if Francis comes, if Mobley comes, those are big hits and get Cato. Let's say you draft a Mecca Okafor. You have Cato, you have Okafor, you have two guys that can defend the basket, which they can do. Well, they can defend any part of the basketball court last year. The backcourt, the front court, the side court, it didn't matter where they defended. They couldn't get it done. But that's where you start, defensively being able to protect your own bucket, and that may give them a good head start. They were last in points allowed, field goal percentage, yep. three-point percentage. If Dwight Howard ends up as their pick, not a Mecca Okafor, what kind of player will Orlando get? They'd be getting a player with tremendous potential to be great, a skill set that would Mind you, of Kevin Garnett, as we mentioned before, he is a graceful athlete with a cut body that can run the floor. He's got a great feel. He's got a 35-inch vertical leap and a 7-4 wingspan, and he is skilled. He has great hands. He can score with either hand around the basket, and he's got spectacular footwork for a kid who's 18 years old and 6 foot 10 inches tall. With his ability to pass it and his great instinctive feel, this young man is going to be a player. What I really like about him is his ability to block shots with either hand. He's ambidextrous as a shot blocker and blocks shots with ease. What does he need to do? He needs to get a go-to move and strength in the post. He does not have a refined post game. He's a little bit more comfortable in facing the basket, and he doesn't yet know exactly what he is as a player. I think he's got to play a little bit more inside, but he does have the ability to step outside as well, and that's attractive. It's so interesting because last year LeBron James was the number one overall pick, and I think most of the country had a very large comfort level with what LeBron James as a player could do because he was on ESPN and ESPN2 a lot. Not as many people are as familiar with Dwight Howard in addition to a very talented young man as a player, a first-class individual, so a guy who will fit in whatever franchise like Mecca Okafor and be cornerstones for the franchise that is coming out of a negative time right now. Yeah, he's got very good maturity for a kid his age, but when you compare his maturity to that of a Mecca Okafor, he's not there yet, but he's just 18 years old, and it's just a question, do you want to wait on his potential or do you want to go with the sure thing? I think you go with Okafor. That's just me. Reasonable minds can differ on that. I'm saying Orlando needs a sure thing. Mm -hmm. You cannot play a guessing game in this situation. And what I mean by a guessing game, I'm not talking about whether or not Dwight Howard can play. We know he can play. We know he's got star written all over him. You don't want to knock him in any way. A fantastic kid. But Emeka Okafor is proven. And if you're the Orlando Magic, you do not have the luxury of the Charlotte franchise being an expansion franchise where a community is patiently waiting for you. Orlando wants something productive now. Oh, Emeka Okafor is the man. He's the answer. Nothing. The beauty of the whole Orlando situation is that they have Grand Hill. And they're certainly lived through the injury situation with Grand Hill. But you have to wonder if that is on their mind if there are questions about a Mecca Okafor's back. No more questions. Here's the answer. Here's the commissioner. With the first pick in the 2004 NBA draft, the Orlando Magic select Dwight Howard from Southwest Christian Academy. You have to remember some of the reaction in the house will be from Connecticut fans who are from just a couple of hours away. And uh, as you would expect, first class of Mecca Okafor with a handshake there for Dwight Howard who becomes the third school player taken number one overall in the last four years of the NBA draft. Kwame Brown with Washington. And of course, last year, LeBron James Cleveland. And now 18-year-old out of Southwest Atlanta Christian High School, Dwight Howard, taken by the Orlando Magic. His proud father, a state trooper down there, is standing by with Mark Jones. <laughs> State Trooper that took a little time off of his job to spend more time with his son. Uh, when did you find out? Was it just now along with everyone else? Just now. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Thank you. 
You have uh, a support system set up for your son that we talked about a few moments ago. Did you spearhead that movement? Yes, yes, I will be. I have my nephew will be on a 24-7 basis with him, but I'll be managing my nephew and both Dwight. You have seen him virtually the same school in the same environment since the time he was two years old. Now he ventures out into the NBA with all of its distractions and other th variables out there. Uh, how do you expect your son to handle that? I think that he'll do tremendously well. He, he relies greatly on his support group. We know that it's going to be a learning process for us, everything that we will need to go through, but we're going to support him all the way to the end. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Back to you, Mike. And, Mark, as we look at uh, some of Dwight Howard and why he became the third high schooler taken number one in the last four years, guys, are surprised? you're talking about Sean Marion and probably Joe Johnson. If you're talking to a multitude of teams, you're talking about them trading somebody that's more than marginable, more than serviceable, somebody that's tinkering on the brink of stardom at the very least. You pair that with a guy like a Mecca Okafor who can anchor your defense. That matters. It means something. You compare it, you put it with Dwight Howard, then you've got a hope instead of knowing. That's my thing. But it's still them ahead of Detroit or Indiana. See, to me, it doesn't. So that's why they can afford to wait. It, don't you? Dwight Howard's going to be really good. I don't think there's any question about that. Is he going to be great? Does he have the drive, the determination? We will see. But I think Okafor, one thing that people are overlooking, he's got the chance to get better as well. The idea that he's too mechanical and not refined, baloney. He's going to get better, and I think he may make Orlando regret this. And here he is with Stuart Scott. Stu. Mike, so far, now that Dwight has sat down, I have counted three different times that Dwight has gone, Woo! <laughs> you have dreamed about being the top overall pick in the draft. How does the dream compare to the reality? It's, it's really hard to explain, you know. I thank God just for allowing me to sit right here, be the first person to let, you know, this feels so good. You are either going number one to Orlando or number two to Charlotte. How do you think other people's expectations will change just because you are the top pick? Well, you know, it's, now it's, now it's going to be based on my work ethic, you know. A lot of people are questioning that, and, you know, I just want to go out there and prove all the, the doubt is wrong. Just keep working hard and just keep the guy first and everything will fall in line. People have said that sometimes you get a little too mellow on the court. What, what do you do to change it? Well, I just need to go out there and play hard every night. That's what I do, you know. What everybody says is they don't know what's really going on in my heart. You know, I don't like to open my mouth a lot, but, you know, I'm strong. You're also the number one overall pick. His nickname is Choir Boy. He loves gospel music. No rap, no cursing. Number one pick. Congratulations, Dwight Howard. Thank you. Mike, let's go back to you. I saw Mom Cheryl, emotional high school teacher there now. The number two pick belongs to the Charlotte Bobcats. Two years ago, the Charlotte Hornets were in the National Basketball Association as uh, Mrs. Howard is so excited by her son's moment. To the Charlotte story for a second. Remember the Charlotte Hornets were there just two short seasons ago. They leave to go to New Orleans. New expansion team, 30th team in the NBA, the Charlotte Bobcats. This person will be the face of the franchise, much like Rex Chapman was two decades ago. With the second pick in the 2004 NBA Draft, the NBA's 30th and newest team, the Charlotte Bobcats, select Emeka Okafor from the University of Connecticut. His dad had to uh, survive around a civil war 
war-torn nation in Nigeria. This young man has come to America, found Houston as a home, and over three years as you see his dad, Pius, Emeka Okafor became a poster boy for everything that is great about college basketball. Handling everything with first class, representing the University of Connecticut very well off the floor, his 3.8 grade point average, getting his finance degree in three years, and Jay Billis winning the national championship this past April. This couldn't have worked out any better for Charlotte. Emeka Okafor is a shot-blocking Buck Williams. He, he, I think, has the potential to be a lot like Alonzo Mourning. He is NBA-ready right now. He's got great timing, terrific shot-blocking instincts, and he's a terrific rebounder, a guy who really relentlessly goes after the ball. He has improved offensively year to year. He's got very good hands. He does not shoot free throws well. That's something he's going to really have to work on, and he's going to have to work on his post game to get a go-to move in the post. But I think this is an outstanding pick by the Charlotte Bobcats. They have got to be really pleased that he is the face of their new franchise. You know, when you talk about a guy who can go after it and is as explosive as Emeka Okafor, he can really, really improve a team and anchor a defense. And he frees you up with his shot blocking ability so that other guys can go out and defend on the perimeter. And that can't be overstated, the importance of that, because he can erase a lot of defensive mistakes. The post, that's one area he's going to have to improve. He's going to have to get a little face-up jump shot to keep people honest. And he's really going to have to improve his free throw shooting. Dick Vitale, six other expansion teams going back over the last 15 years or so. Two of them started with big men, Vancouver, Bryant Reeves, Miami, Ronnie Cycli, but Emeka Okafor brings a different skill set when he goes to Charlotte. You know, I'll tell you, Mike, what a great choice. They're going to be dancing with joy in Charlotte, with jubilation. When you look certainly at Howard going number one, certainly a young man who seems like a beautiful guy, great family, very skilled, but loads of potential. Okafor's played 103 games on the collegiate level. But you know what? More I think about Orlando, think about this. They let Shaq go, major mistake. Tracy McGrady, they don't keep him happy, major mistake. And you know what? Ten years, man, they're going to regret not taking Mr. Okafer, who is a can't miss in this league for 10 years. Let's visit with Emeka right now, Dickie, standing by with Stuart Scott. Stu? Mike, thanks a lot. Uh, Emeka, before today, a lot of people, maybe most people, thought you would be the top overall pick. From a competitive standpoint, how disappointed are you that you weren't top? Um, I see myself, I'm too fortunate right now. You know, I'm a firm believer that everything happened for a reason. You know, I put things in God's hand and you know, he has my best interest, so I just go with the flow. He points me in the direction, I go there. Well, you guys are in the same division as Orlando, so, you know, whenever you want next season, you can kind of take it out on him. Everybody talks about you being a guy who's into his books and who's into his basketball, and, like, that's it. What else do you like to do, though? I'm a regular guy. You know, I like having my fun, um, you know, and I'm just, you know, I like going out, going to movies, hanging with my friends, and, you know, I just happen to be good at school and, you know, can bounce the ball. A regular guy who can block shots with the best of a mic. This guy once took a final exam in college for a class he didn't even go to just to see if he could do it. He got a B. That's the kind of hard work the Bobcats will get. And it has paid off, Stuart. Let's bring in the man who will be his head coach and general manager at the Charlotte Bobcats. Be a video conference, one of our 18 around the league. Bernie Bickerstaff. Bernie, what was the reaction in the room when you found out Orlando was taking Dwight Howard? Uh, we, we were elated. Uh, <laughs> We want to build our basketball team around defense, and uh, he represents the best. Did you have any sense that Orlando was going to take Howard? Yeah, we had spoken to John earlier this morning, and he conveyed that that would be their choice. As you build the rest of your team, the expansion draft was held two days ago. You have some pieces, athletic pieces, kind of six, seven, six, eight players. What's the next step for this franchise after this draft is done? Acquiring somebody in free agency? Well, the draft isn't over yet. We've got some things that's pending. It just depends on how the draft goes. And are you guys still looking to get in the first round here? We would, we would like to. Okay. Well, so are you close to anything? Uh, I think we have choices, but it's contingent upon people being there that we'd like to make a move on. We will see if that happens. You want to tell us the guys who you're trying to wait for? Mike. Bernie. <laughs> Talk to you later. Thanks. It's a, it's a stalemate. <laughs> Thank you, Bernie. Got to ask the question. Bernie Bickerstaff. Chicago's on the clock. They have the third pick. They will be again in the 
the first round at seven. We'll explain why in a little bit. But let's find out the first piece for the Bulls in the 2004 draft. Back to the commission. With the third pick in the 2004 NBA draft, the Chicago Bulls select Ben Gordon from the University of Connecticut. So back-to-back -back members of the national championship Connecticut team are taken. Go back to 1979, Michigan State was the national champion, and Magic Johnson was taken first and Greg Kelcher fourth. If you add those up, that would be a total of first and fourth five. Second, Okafor, third, Gordon adds up to five. So a quarter of a century later, national championship teammates go in similar spots in the draft. Junior Ben Gordon taken by Connecticut. Tom, fit for Chicago, Ben Gordon. Well, you got Kurt Heinrich already who plays point guard. So the, the thing is, can Ben Gordon at 6'3 play some point? I mean, offensively, the guy can do everything. He can shoot from the outside. He can break you down. He can get to the rim. He can flush on you. I don't think there's anything he can't do offensively. But with his size, he's going to have to play a little bit of point guard in the NBA. That's the only question I have. Can he do that? And it's a fair question, Tom, whether he can play the point. But I think in today's NBA, how many true point guards are there out there? Well, maybe a handful, half a dozen. Ben Gordon is a dynamic and explosive scorer. He's only 6'1 without his shoes on, but he's got a 6'8 wingspan. And he is explosive and quick. I, I love him as a player. He can score points. He can guard. He can rebound. And he can also pass the ball. He just needs to make better decisions with it third time in the common draft going back to 1966 that's 48 years that a pair of teammates have been taken in the top three dick vitale somewhere down in the carolinas jim calhoun probably played a round of golf today and is probably smiling very proud of his guys well, you know, Mike, he's got to be very proud of winner's mentality. Chicago and John Paxson just made a great choice. No doubt, this kid can shoot the basketball great at the free throw line. He can break it down. And all the critics will say, oh, well, he's got to make the conversion. Doesn't handle well. They said that about a guy named Chauncey Billups. He's standing tall now, and his trophy case looks like yours, Mike. He's got the beautiful trophy that says MVP in the NBA championships. A great choice for Chicago the last six years have been a disaster. They finally made a great choice. Didn't make a great choice when they traded Elton Brand for a high school kid, but we'll talk about that on another day. <laughs> In the last decade, the University of Connecticut's had six top ten picks. Ben Gordon's the sixth. He's with Stewart. Thanks a lot, Mike. Ben, there are a lot of guards out there that could have been selected. Why do you think the Bulls chose you at number three? I believe I'm just, you know, the most versatile guard, you know, um, as far as my size, strength, and you know, my shooting ability. My playmaking skills, I think I was the best guard available. Last year when the U.S. national team was practicing in Manhattan, you went to just watch. Why? I mean, I'm a student of the game, you know, so why not, you know, if you have the opportunity to watch the best basketball players in the world and just try to pick up things that you can learn, you know, so it was a great learning experience for me, and I learned a lot. This guy's nickname, Mike, is Gentle Ben. Do not be fooled. My man has got a sick, deadly jump shot. Two juniors who come out of Connecticut go 2-3 in the draft. The Clippers are on the clock. We'll find out what they do. And then some interest at the five spot as we continue with the 2004 NBA draft with a big Connecticut feel. I'm Ben Okafor. And I'm Ben Gordon. And you're watching the NBA draft on ESPN. Come on, where are you allowed? See what a degree does. I never went to class, man. <laughs> Closed captioning brought to you by Tremclad Rust Paints. More people paint to protect more things with Tremclad than all other rust paints combined. Trust Tremclad on metal. Speed Stick 24-7 gives you proven non-stop protection. With time-release sweat and odor fighters, Speed Stick's always there when you need it the most. Speed Stick 24-7, it never quits. Hey, yo, Thirst, let me get a Sprite. No doubt. What's better than Sprite when it's hotter than a devil's drawers? Oh, here he goes. I'm serious. That thirst quenching lemon lime hitting the back of your throat. Splat out. Name one thing that's better. Uh, you can't. There is nothing better. I dare you. I defy you to name one thing. All right. Name two. Show him my motto. New Sprite remix, very clear. It's Sprite with the burst of berry flavor. Are you I like that. I, I couldn't afford it. I couldn't. Hey, Mom. Hey, Scotty. Huh? 
How's dinner with Sarah? Oh, it's good, good. Um, I'm gonna head over to Jimmy's, and Sarah's gonna head home. Okay, just don't be too late. Cool. Uh, see ya. That's Scotty. Everything all right? Remember our first date? Share more minutes, share more moments with Family Plan. Only from Rogers Wireless. Four. Hi. What's this? It's our winning can. It's not a winning can. Sorry. If you and two friends want into the Coors Life Maxim Golf Experience, all you have to do is look for the winning bottle or can in specially marked cases of Coors Light. Check out Maxim on newsstands or go to CoorsLight.ca for details. You could spend the day with some Maxim cans. What's next? Coors Light. It's golf done differently. With the fourth pick in the 2004 NBA draft, the Los Angeles Clippers select Sean Livingston from Peoria Central High School. So we've had two Connecticut players and two high school players taken in the first four picks of this draft. Sean Livingston, 6'7", was going to go to Duke if he didn't make the jump to the NBA. Here's a kid who played with the high school kids when he was in fourth grade. Next year, he'll be a couple of months removed from high school playing with the guys in the NBA. Not ready to play right now. Livingston is 6'7", an absolute magician with the basketball, a creative handler and passer. And boy, Mike, is he long. He's got a 6'11 wingspan. I think he's going to be an outstanding player. Needs to improve his shot, though. Not a good shooter. Andy Katz covers college basketball for us all year round. He's been watching the high school beat leading up to this draft. Andy, your thoughts on these two high school players going in the top four with Livingston here? Well, first of all, Mike, unlike Dwight Howard, uh, who had really basically decided last July that he was going to enter the NBA draft, Sean Livingston waited down to the final couple of weeks. He did not sign with an agent until the last couple of weeks. In fact, he was so committed to this process, he drove up from Peoria, Illinois, up to Chicago to Hoops the Gym to work out every weekend with Tim Grover because he still was holding out hope that he might go to Duke. His grandfather wanted him to go to Duke. In fact, back in April, Mike Krzyzewski went out, gave the pitch to Sean Livingston that maybe he should go there for at least one season. And Livingston really thought about this, that if he wasn't going to go in the top five, that he should go to Duke. So he really agonized over this decision. It's been a dozen years since the Clippers took a point guard with their first round pick, Randy Woods, back in 92. But now Livingston here in 2004. Jay, let's talk for a second about Livingston and show people why he has a lot of potential. Well, because he's a true point guard. I mean, he really can't see the floor. And, and as we mentioned before, an absolute magician with the basketball. The ball is an extension of his hand. Very creative with the ball in his hands. I think he's going to be an outstanding player, but it's going to take him a period of years. We mentioned he's long armed with a 6'11 wing span he's a playmaker that sees the floor the problem is he's physically weak in the Chicago pre-draft camp he couldn't lift 185 pounds in the bench press off his chest even once now he's just 18 that's going to improve his length is incredible and with that 611 wingspan he is still growing he is going to get stronger his shot needs a lot of improvement he shoots a flat ball but he can rise up in the lane over you and shoot over you I think we could look back Mike in five or six years and say that Sean Livingston was the best prospect in this draft. That's the kind of upside he's got. He's got Magic Johnson type skills. Is he as good as Magic Johnson? No. Right, but he's got is. that kind of game. He'll be playing for Mike Dunleavy, the Clippers coach, and he's standing by right now with Stuart Scott. Mike, obviously, Sean got the message about the pinstripe suit, man. I left it for you. I, I didn't know if you were going to get it, but you got it? Yeah. All right, cool. <laughs> you once led an eighth grade team to a city championship when you were in fourth grade, so you've been among older players before. What kind of expectations do you have of yourself this year? I, I'm, I look to make a contribution sooner than later. You know what I mean? It's, you know, it, I'm looking to take a positive momentum, winning attitude, uh, high skill level, and just, you know, a, a tough work ethic into the Los Angeles Clippers. Now you're 6'7", you're about a buck nothing, maybe 190, <laughs> maybe with all the clothes on. Jay right, just right, said right. you got to get stronger. How do you get stronger quickly? Preparation, training, uh, 
nutrition, all of it. You know, it, it's going to take dedication. It's going to take work ethic. But, you know, you can't be lazy and, and uh, expect to have results. Jay mentioned that 185. You can get that up now, right? Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm working on that. Yeah. yeah. That's past tense oh, yeah. now. Past he only tense. weighs 180, man. Come on, Jay. Give him, <laughs> give him a break right there. Right, Sean Livingston, congratulations, man. All right. Mike. Thank you, Stu. Proud day in Peoria, Illinois. By the way, Ralph Lawler, the longtime voice of the L.A. Clippers, also from Peoria. So you got Peoria Pow out there when you head to Clipper land. Now, Washington is on the clock. Before I get to that, I want to tell you about Dwight Howard, who in his press conference with the rest of the media said a couple of minutes ago he knew all day that Orlando was going to take him at the number one pick. Obviously, Mecca Okafor didn't know that. The Bobcats did, so you know the background on that story. Now, Washington's on the clock. I'll take you back to August of 2001. Washington and Orlando made a trade for Brendan Haywood. Why is that important? Because a future number one in the 2005 draft was in that deal. Because of that, this proposed trade that we've been talking about for two days cannot go down until the pick is made because you must have your pick in one of two consecutive years, your first overall pick, or your first round pick in the draft, as your possession. That's why the trade can't happen until the pick is made. David, even though it's Washington on the clock down here on the screen, in fact, Dallas is the team interested in this selection. That's right, Mike, and, and you still hear talk they have been trying all day to move down, and one of the things that came closest was a deal with Philadelphia. It would have sent this pick and Jerry Stackles, who they got yesterday, to Philadelphia, where he started his career with Allen Iverson in exchange for nine and Glenn Robinson. Now, I was told about 15 minutes ago that right now this deal is not being done, but that it could conceivably be res resurrected. If you see this guy, if you see Andre Iguodala or Kirk Snyder picked here, you may start thinking about something. All right, let's uh, not wait any longer. Let's go up to NBA Commissioner David Stern. Again, this is Washington's pick, but in reality, Dallas's player. With the fifth pick in the 2004 NBA draft, the Washington Wizards select Devin Harris from the University of Wisconsin. Right there with Sean Livingston with the point guards talked about decision to stay in the draft after coming out of the University of Wisconsin. Another junior, so three college juniors who had a year of eligibility left have come out to go to the NBA draft. And here the pick will belong to Dallas. Who knows for how long? Well, it's interesting simply because Dallas needs a point guard. If they make the move and trade for Shaq, the Lakers will need a point guard. Because Steve Nash is a free agent exactly. who Steve might not Nash be there next That's year. right. And, he, you know, he's going to be gone and he's looking to go to Phoenix if Phoenix doesn't go after Kobe. So it's a very interesting pick. I hear a lot of things about this kid that Clippers was telling everybody Jay? how much they wanted this kid. Really quick off the dribble. He's 6'3", so he's got size. Another kid with a long wingspan, about a 6'8 wingspan. And he can get by you off the dribble. He is a streaky shooter, but he can make shots. And I will tell you, he hits big ones against Michigan State earlier this year. He knocked down some huge shots to beat the Spartans, and he does that with regularity. He can also defend, and I think he's good enough to play the point guard position right now. I was a little surprised that the Clippers went with Livingston because you got to wait on him. Devin Harris is NBA ready today to play the point. Mr. Kidd, who was a little bit hesitant to go to with this term, the real world, Devin Harris. Maybe you read the story in ESPN, the magazine. It was like a, a threes company deal. Two female friends who were girlfriends, not one word, but two words. Female friends as his roommates. Uh, Devin Harris leaves Madison, and who knows where he'll be going. Maybe just down the road, still a few hours to uh, Chicago, to Dallas, who knows where. In any case, he's Washington's property for the moment. Devin, you got a Wizards hat on. Do you have any idea where you're going to be playing next season? No, whatsoever. Do you have any any hopeful wishes where you might be playing next season? It's, it's I don't know. So None get out of here. What are you doing here? With <laughs> <laughs> this is interesting because here you are, the fifth pick. You're sitting up here, but you have no clue. What does this feel like? I don't, it feels good to get out of those chairs over there. I can tell you that. <laughs> but uh, up here, I mean, I'm still clueless. You're still clueless. What about your game do you think will surprise whatever team you I think my winning attitude, my hard work, and just, just knowing the game of basketball. All right. Some people call him a mama's boy, but on the court, as emotionally tough as he gets. Mike? Devin Harris will find out where he goes perhaps later on tonight, perhaps as the weekend goes on. We do know the Clippers selection with Sean Livingston. Jim Gray standing by with one of the men who made the decision out in L.A. Jim.
Mike, that's right. The general manager, he's been in this position now 17 years. Elgin Baylor. Elgin, you got the man you wanted. When you traded down from two, would you have taken Livingston at two? Well, we did our homework. We knew we, that we could trade down and we'd get him at four. So, uh, and then it helps us in other ways, too, as far as salary cap and things concerned. So we knew we'd be able to get him at four. Otherwise, we wouldn't trade down. Elgin, how long before he can play? Well, you know, it depends. You know, the coach could have to make, has to make that decision. You know, he could come in and the first year, you know, he could show uh, by his play, the minutes he gets, that he can play in this league, which I'm sure he can, but that depends. It might take a season. It might take a half a season. It might take a year. But it just depends how quickly he's going to develop. But I just don't think it'll take two or three years. I don't think it'll take that long for him to show that he can play in this league. Elgin, you mentioned the salary cap. You're way under. It's been widely written. <laughs> Everybody's talking about it out here and across the country. A guy named number eight. Do you have a jersey waiting for him? No, we can't talk about that. But we will be active in the free agent market uh, this year. We'll be very act active. <clears throat> and uh, we're going to do everything we possibly can to improve this team. Elgin, thank you. Thank you thank for your you, time. Man. Congratulations on the thank pick. You. Sorry about my voice, but Lost we're his talking voice. all day. It's war room. It's war in there. Mike, back to you. Elgin, Elgin getting virtually choked up just the thought of talking about number eight. Of course, Kobe Bryant and free agency doesn't start until a week from now. Atlanta's on the clock. They only have four players under contract. They don't have a coach, but they have this pick, and here it is. With the sixth pick in the 2004 NBA draft, the Atlanta Hawks select Josh... Concept when he was down at Stanford and certainly showed that he could shoot the three as well. He shot 43% from the trifecta. He missed nine games. I think they're going to love him in Atlanta. Runs the court exceptionally well. And what a wingspan he has. Defends, very athletic. And like most players, he's going to have to get physically a lot stronger. But I think he's a great choice. I really like him. I like his upside. And I like his future. This kid is a quality young man as well. They'll have no problem with him off the court. He'll be a real uh, guy that will contribute to the area, and there's no doubt he can play. Excellent transition player, and he can make the trifecta. Another one from Lakewood, California. Southern California City has turned out some very good players, like the O'Bannon brothers, like Jason Capono, like... Me? Tom Tolbert. <laughs> you know, I had a chance to watch him play a lot living out in the Bay Area, and I wouldn't say he's great at one thing. He's a jack-of-all-trades type player. He's very good at a lot of things. I mean, he can take out the dribble. He can post jump. He can defend. He's real smooth. And the way he plays, he plays at a pace that seems like it's too slow, but he gets by it. He never lets the game get too quick for him. He's always under control. Proud mom is here as well tonight. She's standing by with Mark Jones. Mark? <laughs> yeah. She said she could kiss me. She's so excited. Just she just did, did Mike, a few <laughs> moments ago. <laughs> Terry, yes. what has been the most overwhelming part of the last few days you were incredibly excited a few moments ago still are floating I, th I think the fact that there were a lot of trades going on and they just thought that his stock was go down, going to go down and that worried us all and we were kind of kind of <laughs> you know just a little nervous. just a little nervous <laughs> like I am right now now are you gonna help him maintain and keep that fro or is the fro going the pros no the fro is staying that's his signature it will stay I know he shouldn't cut that. All right. No. Hey, Stewart's got uh, Ben Wallace. Look out. There's a bigger fro coming down the block. <laughs> Josh is 6'8, but he's 7'2 with this fro. He was watching his mom do the interview. He said, Mom, what are you doing grabbing the microphone? <laughs> when you got up here, you said, This is the craziest process ever. What do you mean by that? Well, uh, this draft in particular, I mean, no one had an idea as to where they would go. And, you know, I was sitting in my room the past two days. Uh, just dying inside. I mean, <laughs> uh, 
you know, all the trades and everything, but, you know, I'm happy that, that I'm going to the Hawks. Old school afro. He's got a body like George Gerben. Loves the mid-range jumper. Josh, what position are you going to play in the NBA? I'm a two-guard. I feel like I, I, I've always been a two-guard, and, and, and I think that that's my natural position, so um, I'm looking forward to it. The more people want an autograph, or more people want to touch the fro? <laughs> the fro, man. The, the fro. fro? Yeah. Now, mom's just cool with the fro, right, as long as you keep it tight. Exactly. It can't be all scraggled, exactly. all, all jacked up like that, Mike. Fro's got to be <laughs> real tight. Ten minutes coming before each game, Mike. Let's go back to you. Well, he'll be doing it perhaps in Atlanta, a team that desperately needs people. Now, let's go to David Aldridge for a second. David, we saw Devin Harris taken a couple of picks ago. Any idea where he may end up? I can tell you unequivocally, Mike, Devin Harris is going to be a Dallas Maverick. He is not going anywhere. And again, as you guys mentioned before, this leads you to believe that Steve Nash will be involved in a package in a sign and trade and to, to go to L.A. for Shaquille O'Neal. But Mark Cuban is telling people tonight that uh, Devin Harris isn't going anywhere. They are going to keep him, and he's going to be the point guard of the future down in Dallas. All right, that was a trade involving the number five overall selection. Now we're up to the number seven overall selection. And on the clock, you see that Phoenix is the team on the clock. However, this will likely be a Chicago Bull, and here's why. This proposed trade with the Suns getting a two later on in tonight's draft, some cash, and a future first-round pick, the Bulls would get the number seven pick. But again, the number one pick for next year for Phoenix is spoken for already for a prior trade, so they must take this selection, now announced by Commissioner David Stern. Again, this is Phoenix officially selecting, but in fact, this pick will be transferred to the Chicago Bulls via the trade we just showed you. With the seventh pick in the 2004 NBA draft, the Phoenix Suns select Luol Dang from Duke University. Another Duke player. The 19-year-old freshman from Duke, Manuk Bowl, also Dinka Tribe, Manu Bowl going back and teaching and showing and taking a care and for teaching the game of basketball. Luau Dang, a product of that, selected here by the Suns, technically, property of the Chicago Bulls once the trade paperwork goes through. He's versatile, he knows how to play. He's long enough that he can overcome a lack of athleticism. He's a decent athlete, but not a great athlete. But with his length, he can stay on the floor. And he's, he's quick enough to get by people, but he doesn't have blow-by ability. He is not one of the best Duke players to come in the draft, but now a dozen Duke players have been taken in the history of the lottery era more than any other school in Dick Vitale. You get a chance to see Duke a lot and Luol Deng a lot. Well, you know, the bottom line is what a great combination they're going to have in Chicago when you add Gordon and Dang. As Jay said and said so well, the bottom line is he's not a great athlete. He's a basketball player, multi-purpose, can play many positions, great attitude. Again, one of those kids you want in your program because he'll come to practice every day. He will not hurt you in any way. And the bottom line is he's going to get better and better shooting the basketball. He's got to improve his perimeter game and making shots from the perimeter. That will come with experience. Remember, you only have one year on a collegiate level. He's a kid, again, I really believe, has a terrific upside. I really salute right now. Paxton, I give him an A, baby. I give him an A right now. I'm getting Gordon and Bang, two quality guys. And remember, they hit a home run last year as well, getting Kirk Heinrich, who proved he can play. So things are starting to look up in the Windy City. Well, Lou Aldang selected there as the Toronto Raptors wait to pick next. Let's go visit with the former Dukey, and he's standing by with Stuart Scott. Thanks a lot, Mike. Lou, all you have the Suns hat on. It'll probably turn into a Chicago Bulls hat. When you were seven years old, all you wanted to do was play soccer. What changed your mind? I mean, just uh, the opportunity, uh, the love of the game just uh, grew in me. And, uh, I mean, I started to grow, so uh, basketball was... Uh, was what I wanted to do is just the love of the game. After a bad offensive game at Duke, which you didn't have many, you would stay in the gym till midnight shooting extra baskets. What are you going to do in the NBA after a bad game? I mean, it, everything is going to be the same. Uh, you got you to gotta keep working hard is what got me here, and that's what I got to keep doing. I'm still a little mad at you for what you did in North Carolina last year. Of times. <laughs> I'll get over it, but I'm, I'm a little mad. Mike, uh, this guy played every position but point guard at Duke. Very versatile, Mike. Be a good time to point out, Stu, that Duke leads North Carolina in selections in the lottery in the lottery, lottery era, 12 to 8. Toronto on the clock will continue. 2004 NBA draft opening round from New York after this.
What's up, everybody? I'm Jameer Nelson. I can't really see the camera. <laughs> <laughs> this program on the score brought to you by Hyundai. When you can get everything you want in a car and Canada's best warranty, you win. Check it out. My accent has no problem handling all my stuff. And with Canada's best warranty, I've got no worries. With the Lancia, we get the best of both worlds. European styling and Canada's best warranty. My Sonata was just ranked highest in initial quality. No wonder Hyundai can back it with the best warranty in the country. Canada's best warranty and incredible deals. Right now at Hyundai. This summer, they may be deep undercover. You sure this is gonna work? Just trust me. But there's some things they can't hide. Oh! White chicks. Mama! You want some of this? Because Brother, how about a toy your new crib? This is my bedroom? Right, right. King size water bed. Game room. Plasma screen, blah, blah, blah. And this is the kitchen. Oh, no, you didn't. Crisp, clean, ice cold, lemon, lime, Sprite, always at your fingertips. Check it out. <laughs> you crying? It's just so beautiful. Show them my motto. New Sprite remix, very clear. It's Sprite with the burst of berry flavor. Congressman? Uh, Congressman? Trying to get members of Congress to get their kids to enlist in the Army, go over to Iraq. The Los Angeles Times raids. It's impressive and incendiary. We must stop these terrorist killers. Now watch this drive. And the New York Times declares it's scorching, a passionate expression of outrage patriotism. And now it's the winner for Best Picture at the Cannes Film Festival. My answer is bring them on. Fahrenheit 9-11. In select cities Friday. Additional cities July 2nd. now on the clock team with Vince Carter last year's number four overall pick all rookie performer Chris Bosch no head coach but this selection with the eighth pick in the 2004 NBA draft the Toronto Raptors select Rafael Araujo surprised that this uh, center at 6'11", 280 went this early. Yeah, I am surprised because he doesn't have a lot of leaping ability. He's not a great athlete. He doesn't have a great back to the basket game, but he's big, strong, and physical. He can play right away, and he's a very good passer, but you could have gotten him later. You didn't need to take him here. Here's Mark Jones with his wife. Mark? I'm with Cheyenne, a uh, little baby here as well, and you think back to all those mornings you rebounded for him at 6 a.m. Was it ever... Was there ever a point where you thought, boy, you guys are going to make it past this point? No, I did, I, we were always just in the moment. It was like, get through AWC, junior college, get through BYU. It was, it was hard to even imagine this point. It was just have a good year at this time and this moment here. And now we're here and we're enjoying this moment. There with your two-month-old baby. What about your husband's humility? I mean, at one point in junior college, cleaning toilets is one of his jobs and, and going to the gym right after and working out. Uh, well, I just think it only helps him to appreciate what he's going to have now and really enjoy everything that he's going to be able to enjoy now. <laughs> Congratulations, Mike. Young couple with a young baby. They don't even look tired, too, like they're getting sleep. Their daughter, Thais, was born in April, so just a couple of months old, as you mentioned, Mark. This guy arrived four years ago, didn't speak English. She's learned English, learned basketball. Give me your impressions, Jay. Well, he's got good footwork and he's got a mean streak, but he plays below the rim and does not have great explosion ability. What he can do is really pass the ball, and he's a good face-up shooter, but really doesn't have 
have much of a post game to speak of and not an explosive defender a guy but he can knock you around and that's one really positive thing about it. he's going to go in throw his body around and be really physical and that's going to be very helpful to any NBA team but this playing below the rim stuff I, I question a little bit because he's not a finisher in traffic so Araujo will be the selection here at number eight for Toronto Philadelphia will be on the clock next they will make the number nine selection and certainly this will be the first surprise pick of the 2004 NBA draft with Araujo who played two years junior college two years at BYU now heading to the Toronto Raptors video conference let's go back to a team that's been hot at the three and seven spot Chicago and we'll bring in from the Chicago Bulls Barry GM and executive vice president John Paxson will you keep both of these players John for your roster well, we plan on it because, you know, right now, one of our, our goals was to, to get more than one player out of this draft. We are in a position where, you know, we've, we've been, we've had some assets that have really been hurt, whether it was Jay Williams, you know, last year, that incident, uh, some other things that have happened where we needed to start building this team up again. And we're still a very young basketball team, so that, that's obvious, but we've addressed some needs and we needed scoring and shooting out of this draft. With Ben Gordon, we get both. With Lou Deng, we get both. Uh, both guys, I think, are going to be able to step on an NBA floor right away and, and play well and, and contribute. So, um, obviously, uh, when, once the deal with Phoenix goes through, we're going to be very happy with this draft. Oh, Coach, Philly's going to make their pick here momentarily. So, thank you for coming out. We'll hopefully visit with you a little bit later on. Thanks again. Yeah, thank you. John Paxson joining us from Chicago. We do want to hear from the man selected, Mr. Araujo, standing by with Stuart Scott. Thanks a lot, Mark. Rafael, when you arrived in the United States more than four years ago, you had one T-shirt, a pair of shorts, one pair of pants, 20 bucks in your pocket, spoke no English. Yep. How in the hammy did you become the eighth pick in the NBA draft this year? Man, this all come with my lot of work I did, and all the beginning when I met my wife too. Like she, she supported me the beginning to the end. Like uh, I'm so proud of myself to meet her. She supported me to begin. Uh, you know, things come with a lot of work, you know, a lot of, uh, now it's pay off today. Hard work does pay off. Mike, his nickname is Baby. <laughs> the way that his wife let him know that she was pregnant, she left him a note just before his birthday and said, how would you like not to be the only baby in the family? Great story, <laughs> Mike, for a great guy. Uh, neat stuff, Stu. It is family story as well. Thank you. Stephen A. Smith, I want to come to you because Philadelphia is on the clock at your hometown. Tell me what you think the Sixers are thinking now. Well, I know they're thinking about Kirk Snyder. From what I heard, you know, they basically told him if he's there, they're going to pick him. But again, everybody's selling some fibs during the NBA draft. But you've got to think about the fact that they need a shooter, they need an athlete. And in, in, in Iguodala, you got to remember he's an athlete that can defend. So you never know what direction Jim O'Brien is going to go in right now. He's the first year coach in Philadelphia. Right. Just don't know. And the talk is to be Iverson, a big man, and three perimeter guys That's right. and structure the offense that way. Jay, let's look at your best available players. Uh, by your pure number ranking, Andre Iguodala out of Arizona would be the player who has, quote, slid a little bit so far. He's the one with the most upside, the best athlete. I wouldn't be surprised to see Billy King and Philly go with Al Jefferson because he's an unbelievable rebounder. He can also shoot the ball. Very explosive. Kurt Snyder shooters well. All right, that lays out what Philadelphia's options are. Here is their pick, and here's David Stern. With the ninth pick in the 2004 NBA draft, the Philadelphia 76ers select Andre Iguodala from the University of Arizona. Oh, the first nine picks, six have been underclassmen. Andre Iguodala, another Arizona product to go in the first round. It's turned out so much good talent here over the last few years. Just a freak of an athlete, Mike. He can really run the floor. He's got a 6'11 wingspan in high school. He high jumped over 6'10. He reminds you a little bit of Scottie Pippen with his skill set, except he's not as good of a shooter. He's going to have to improve that jump shot. He shoots it with ease, but he does not have a very consistent jumper. And he's he's got triple-double ability. He had several triple-doubles last year for Arizona, and he can defend anybody. What you really like about him is his upside as far as being an athlete, an athlete that can pass it, that can handle it. He doesn't shoot it. He does get to the basket and can really get out in transition. You put him in the backcourt with Allen Iverson, and he can make up for Iverson's lack of size and really guard somebody. Do you like the pick, Steve? I love the pick, and I'm going to tell you why. Allen Iverson's going to shoot 30 times a game. Oh, the really? fact is, you need somebody <laughs> on the court with him that's going to go a 
and get the basketball as opposed to waiting for the basketball. This guy's got the athleticism to do it. Like Jay said, he can put up a triple-double on any given night, and you don't necessarily need somebody to call plays for him in order for him to get the job done. I love it. And I think what he does, too, is we talked about offensively. He upgrades you defensively. Jay mentioned how long his wingspan is. He really gets after you, and he can get after you full court. I mean, the full 94 feet, he can get out there and defend. He can deflect balls. He can rebound. He's a tremendous offensive rebounder. And on the break, you throw it up anywhere near the rim, this guy can get it and finish. It's going to go to Arkansas when Nolan Richardson's situation happened there, left there, went to Arizona. Luke Walton was a mentor for him, and he will be in the NBA like Luke Walton. Andre Iguodala standing by with Steve Scott. Thanks a lot, Mike. Andre, you're the first Wildcat to ever lead the team in rebounds, assists, and steals, but you're not known as a scorer. How does a non-scorer end up being the ninth pick in the NBA draft? Uh, well, I think, you know, uh, my style of play, you know, was to get everyone involved, and we had a lot of scorers in uh, Arizona. But I've uh, been shooting the ball very well as of lately, and uh, I'm looking forward to coming in and, and being a player that assists Ala Iverson, you know, in, in every part of the game. You know, he's known as a scorer, so maybe I can compliment him uh, in, in a good way. Tim Grover, Michael Jordan's trainer, also trains this guy. Tim calls you a freak. What does he mean by that? Uh, I guess just being able to do everything at a different level, level than everyone else. You know, I can play above the rim. You know, uh, I, can, I can play the one. You know, uh, I can shoot the ball well. I can get everyone involved. So I just do everything well. Rocking that pinstripe too. Mike, the Philadelphia 76er backcourt now, the answer and the freak. Well, he's got it figured out already. First thing he said, I want to help Allen Iverson do whatever he needs to get done. That will help him in Philadelphia. Right, Stephen? And Cleveland's on the clock. They made the big splash last year with number one LeBron James. Come back and find out. Well, there it is. You called it. You called the stretch for Rafael Araujo. And you do like the player, though, that the Raptors are getting at the eight spot. I think so. I think he's a late bloomer, and uh, he addresses a need that the Raptors have. And now they can go out and address their other needs in another way through free agency or trades. Now, he averaged 18.1 and 10 rebounds at BYU. What kind of player uh, are we going to see in, in Araujo? He's a very physical, tough, hard-nosed player that competes. And, and he's more skilled than you'd think looking at a player of his size. He can pass the ball and he can shoot the ball. Uh, his issues are going to be on defense uh, because he's only an average athlete. Could they have traded down and then perhaps got him a little later? That's the question that's going to be asked. I don't know. You don't know? Probably not. Probably not. <laughs> that's why they took him at that spot. Right. right? So Rafael Araujo is the man who is taken by the Toronto Raptors. 6'11", 280, plays big, plays strong. All right, let's send it down to the ACC. David Land is standing by with Rob Babcock. David. Thanks very much, guys. Lucky to be joined by Rob Babcock, the general manager, of course, of the Raptors. And uh, how tough was it to make that pick? Let's start there. Well, we, we went through a you know, process looking at every player in the draft. I mean, we, we identified four or five guys that we thought have the type of ability and character that would make our team a better basketball team. And he's the guy of the big men that we really identified that could step in and make an impact with our team right away. He can, he can get some minutes right away because he's mature, he's fundamentally sound, he's tough, uh, he, he passes the ball, he, he does the things you need to do in basketball games. A lot, of, a lot of little dirty work things. So we had four or five guys that we looked at and we we're very happy that, we, that he was available there. Do you envision seeing Chris Bosch obviously played over 2,500 minutes in his rookie year last year. Do you see him moving back to four or do you see them platooning five, five each? Well, I think that Chris will, will probably play at both spots but that's going to be dependent upon you know the new head coach and 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 how he sees everything but certainly you want to you want to free Chris Bosch up to play more at the four which I think is his natural position and and where his future is where do you see you're looking ahead to number 39 now in the second round uh, what are your what's your mindset going into that pick <laughs> boy we got a long way to go there uh, it, there's there's so many variables that take place with a 39th pick originally we thought that that 39th pick that, that we had a very good chance of getting somebody that would make our team but with the exodus of players that left the draft after declaring, that dropped the, the depth of that significantly. Um, so now I think we, you know, we'll be lucky if we can get someone that makes our team this year. We, we may look at the, try and find somebody that has a chance to develop maybe in Europe for you know, you know, one or two years and uh, somebody that we might be able to get in the future. So that, that's a wait and see type thing. We, we'll have to get back in there and, and see that. All right, I wish you luck. Thanks for taking the time. Thank you. Okay, Rob Bab Babcock, general manager of the, the Toronto Raptors. Back to you guys. 
Thanks a lot, David. And if you're surprised by that pick, you shouldn't be. Glenn Grumwald called it in our preview show. Rafael Araujo is now a member of the Toronto Raptors. Let's get it back to New York, where Cleveland is now on the clock. With the 10th pick in the 2004 NBA Draft, the Cleveland Cavaliers select Luke Jackson from the University of Oregon. Luke Jackson not here in New York, but a top 10 selection, Dick Vitale. Luke Jackson part of a great run of players in Oregon the last couple of years. Mike, excellent choice. He's got great range as a shooter. He can flat out shoot the trifecta. He shot 43% from the perimeter. I talked to Lute Olsen, I remember early during the basketball season, and he raved about Luke Jackson. I love his game. He really can get free for a shot, and he makes shots. And today, you got to find people that can shoot the basketball. You see, for example, as you watch him taking the ball to the goal here, what happened with Rip Hamilton with the Pistons, a guy that can make shots. I love guys that can score and make shots he can flat out shoot the basketball and he can pass it as well he has a lot of moves around the bucket I think he's a great choice to blend in with LeBron James's creativity and great passing ability you know my guy Stephen A Smith made a great statement early in the draft when he said that he thought that Charlotte would have been a better place for certainly Howard as an expansion team however I disagree with my guy Stephen A about Iguodala couldn't dominate on a collegiate level. I love his athleticism, but he averaged 12 points a game in a fast-paced game with Arizona. Shows you the thinness of this draft when a guy's a lottery selection and he can't dominate in college. I think Luke Jackson would have been a better running mate in Philadelphia with the penetration of Mr. Iverson because he can flat out make shots, Stephen. Let me break it down to you, Dickie V, and I love you, but let me tell you something. When Larry Brown was in Philadelphia, one of the things that he said is that you need athletes to put around Allen Iverson. You don't need standout shooters out there. You don't need people that want the ball and want to take people... draft lottery the Washington Capitals and general manager George McPhee have earned a crack at budding superstar Alexander Ovechkin a consensus pick as a future NHL star McPhee and the Caps have a date at the top with Ovechkin beyond that lots of injury more coming on that next live from Raleigh North Carolina TSN and ESPN2 proudly present the 2004 National Hockey League entry draft this is where champions are built and where reputations are made and broken. Doug Wilson, once a first round pick, now a GM, along with Mike Keenan, Bob Ganey, and others. This is where the champions are made. And most good teams look back at their future success. Back to one good day at the draft. And there's a new economic order coming in the NHL and more focus than ever before on having a good day here. Hi, everybody. Welcome to viewers in Canada on TSN and across the United States on ESPN2. I'm Gord Miller, along with TSN hockey analyst Pierre Maguire and our first-round pick, former NHL GM Brian Burke. We'll get to the guys on Alexander Ovechkin in a moment, but first of all, lots of intrigue on the floor. For the latest on that, here's TSN's Bob McKenzie. Well, that's right, Gord. There is lots of trade talk, some of it involving established names. We're hearing the name Vinny Prospel from the Mighty Ducks of Anaheim, perhaps maybe going back to the Tampa Bay Lightning. Peter Sikora from the Ducks, another guy that could be on the move. And lots of Patrick Lalim trade rumors with the Ottawa Senators, perhaps clearing the way for Dominic Hasek, who is expected to be a senator early in July. As for the draft itself, very interesting. If the thing proceeds as we think it will, with Alexander Ovechkin going number one, and Jenny Malkin going number two, and Cam Barker going number three to the Chicago Blackhawks. There's a very good chance that the number four pick with the Columbus Blue Jackets will be flip-flopped to the hometown Carolina Hurricanes. We'll try to create a buzz here at the RBC Center. With more on the draft, here's Dave Strader. All right, Bob, thanks very much. Uh, George, in a year where the number one has been clear in most people's minds for the last couple of years, how many teams made serious offers for your number one pick? Well, we had about 15 teams inquire, and three were pretty serious and made some real healthy offers, but uh, we like what we think we can acquire here. Any uh, serious offers uh, as recently as this morning? No, I had one team call again this morning and said, we've, we've made our mind up, we're going to make the pick. All right, George. Thank you, David. Thanks, Gord. 
All right, thanks very much, David. Brian Burks, no stranger to the National Hockey League draft as a GM in both Vancouver and Hartford. It was back in 1993 at the draft that Brian made a pretty big splash, trading up to get defenseman Chris Pronger for the Hartford Whalers. And then in 1999, a pretty sweet deal as well, getting the second and third picks and drafting the Sedin Twins. Daniel and Henrik. Now we come to the 2004 draft, Brian. Alexander Ovechkin's day in the sun. How good is this guy? This kid can't miss. He's going to be an outstanding player in the National Hockey League right away. He's got size, he can pass the puck, and he can finish. He's a really rare combination of all of those things. He's going to be a stud. Ryan, I go back to 1990. I was involved in the process of drafting Yarmir Yager, who was absolutely tremendous, obviously, early on in his career. And then Marcus Naslin in 1991. I was part of that process as well. I think Marcus Naslin is probably the best European-born captain in the National Hockey League right now. Alexander Ovechkin has the same leadership intangible. And when you talk about athletic ability, Yarmir Yager is special. Alexander Ovechkin is probably a more refined player at this point in his career than Yarmir Yager. So I think you're absolutely right, Brian. You can't miss on this player. He's as good a prospect as I've seen since Jaromir Yager came into this league. It's a raucous gathering here in Raleigh, a near-capacity crowd to take it in. Alexander Ovechkin has been waiting for this day for a long time. His moment is at hand. How do you protect your car from damaging UV rays? Try Armor. Armor All Protectant. It does more than clean and shine. It protects. Now more than ever with our best UV formula. Bleary eyes, fatigue, constriction in the extremities. Many people don't recognize the first signs of AADS, Advanced Airline Dissatisfaction Syndrome. At WestJet, we've discovered that leather seats, more leg room, and treating people like human beings can eradicate the suffering. If you know someone like Gloria, there is still hope they can enjoy traveling again. Call WestJet. We can help. Get a free Mission M1 stick or Mission L2 stick when you purchase a pair of Pure S500 or Pure S400 with a pitch adjustable holder. From June 1st to July 15th, it's free. Ask your local retailer about Mission's free stick offer. This is letting your friends in on the fun right now. This summer, get unlimited talk, text, and picture messaging. Plus, get color flip phones starting from just seventy nine ninety nine. Only from Rogers Wireless. Check it out. My accent has no problem handling all my stuff, and with Canada's best warranty, I've got no worries. With the Lancia, we get the best of both worlds: European styling and Canada's best warranty. My Sonata was just ranked highest in initial quality. No wonder Hyundai can back it with the best warranty in the country. Canada's best warranty and incredible deals. Right now at Hyundai. The 2004 NHL Entry Draft on TSN is brought to you in part by Armor All Protectant, our best ever protection against damaging UV rays by WestJet. It's nicer up here. And by Mission Hockey. 388% more pros now choose Mission as their brand. Make the switch to Mission before July 15th and get a free composite stick. What you played for, what you dreamed about, what you hope for. Now the stars select from the Hamlet's Blazers, Jerome Aguinla. Right back in by Aguinla. Shot score! Robin Rigier. He scores! Rigier, the best defenseman right now for the Calgary Flames. The number one pick in the entire NHL draft, Vincent LeCavalier. Brilliant play by LeCavalier. And did this young man of 24 years of age come through for his club? Welcome 
back to the National Hockey League draft as we are moments away from the first selection in 2004, which belongs to the Washington Capitals, who won the draft lottery. There's GM George McPhee, who has championship dreams back in 1998. His team got all the way to the Stanley Cup final. Brian Burke, there's a new economic order coming in the NHL. How more important is it now to be good at the draft than it was in the past? I think it's critical. You've only got three ways to get players. You've got to draft them, you've got to trade for them, or you've got to sign them as free agents. I think there's going to be an increased emphasis on the amateur draft. It's always been important. Now it's going to become vital if you want to be competitive. And every championship team can look back to a good day at the draft as the reason it was able to lift the Stanley Cup, and that includes the Tampa Bay Lightning. So a wait on Washington and the intrigue that will follow. Lots of talk about trades. We'll have more on that coming up. But before Washington makes the first round pick, here's the commissioner of the National Hockey League, Gary Bettman. Good afternoon. Welcome to RBC Center and the 2004 National Hockey League Entry Draft. I want to express the appreciation of the entire NHL family to the fans of the Carolina Hurricanes and to the people in the Triangle for making us feel